Hello and welcome to Saluki Stadium here in Carbondale, Illinois, as the Salukis open the season against Austin P. My name is Dominic Hosher. I'm alongside former Saluki quarterback Stone Labanowitz and Stone. The Saluki is looking for a bounce back year this year after going five and six last season. They were picked in the MVFC preseason poll to finish fifth in the conference. First and second, South Dakota State, the FCS champions from a year ago, as well as North Dakota State. And Dom, to be completely honest with you, I think they love being in that blind spot. Five, it seems quiet for them. And when you look at number one and number two, that's South Dakota State and that's North Dakota State. Both of those names ring bells all over the FCS. And I think what's unique for 2023 in the Salukis, they have both of them on the schedule. So very likely that this preseason poll now is flipped upside down come into the season. When you look at this SIU roster and you look at the offensive side of the ball, no more Avante Cox, no more Jacob Garrett, but they do return Deontay Cox. And folks, if you're wondering if Avante Cox and Deontay Cox are related, you would be correct. They're twin brothers. Dom, Deontay Cox is pivotal for this team. It's underrated to call him an impact player in this game. I think they're going to lean on him whenever there are big plays. Look for number two to be involved. When you flip it to the other side of the ball on the defensive end, you look at their linebacker, Branson Colm, as one of the key returners. Again, underrated to call him a key returner in this spot. Branson is the quarterback of that defense. When there are big plays on defense, when you see a fumble, when you see an interception, keep your eyes on number 12 because he's most likely going to be involved. I love when you had an interview with Branson this week. He said he's just ready to hit somebody in a different uniform. Like, it's just about that time. Branson was kind enough to give us some time earlier this week to talk about the upcoming season and the preseason and such. On the other side, Austin P. 7-4 and four one season ago. Big offensive numbers. You look at their running back position of Javon Jackson and C.J. Evans. You can see why those two have high expectations coming into this season as well. High expectations, that's absolutely correct. And Mike DeLillo, the quarterback for this team, this backfield, Dominic, is just loaded with experience. So many games, so many yards, so many times when the bright lights are on that they've been playing together. So I expect the running backs and Mike DeLillo to be as one tonight and, and carry this team. They're going to put up an awesome fight. Stone, you played in plenty of season openers throughout your career. You know what this feeling is like. When you're a player on either sideline, you've been waiting the entire offseason to come back in on this field again. What kind of mentality do you have? What kind of nerves are you dealing with? Excitement and all of those combined. Everything in week one has to do with execution. It's time to execute. That's all it is because all of the time that you've put in, in the winter when the season ended, over to spring football, right, where you're just graded by these coaches on every single thing that you do. And then you go over to OTAs where they're led by the players, right? That's when you really got to hone your craft. And then come fall camp and the summer and the things that you're ramping up to get to this point, it's time to put it on display. The cameras are rolling. There are guys in the booth calling these games, whether it's our play-by-play -play radio guys, us down on ESPN Plus, the Austin P guys. There are so many eyes on this ball game right now because it's week one and football's back. You can see the Austin P bench currently. When we looked at Branson Combs, we highlighted him as one of the key players on the defensive side for SIU. When you flip it over, you again go to the linebacker spot. We were talking about him before the game, and when you look at Sam Howard, you expect him to make a key difference here tonight too. Sam Howard's big on this team, and having a conversation with some of the coaches on that Austin P sideline, they're going to go with Sam Gums, and he's going to pack a punch. He may not be the quickest linebacker laterally, but he's going to punch you in the mouth. He's going to fill gaps, and he's going to let you hear it afterwards. I'm a huge fan of Sam. He's going to make some plays today, Dom. Marcel Kerr is the head official here tonight as we are getting set for Salukis and Governors, the eighth meeting all time between the two programs, but the first one in over 30 years. So it's a rare matchup between Austin P and Southern Illinois. Can you say that one more time? Is that 31 years? Hey, that's what you do it for, right? I mean, we talked about hitting a guy in a different color jersey. Well, talk about hitting a guy on a team that you never thought you were going to play or that the Salukis haven't played in 31 years. I love this for them. Five and two all time are the Salukis who started 0 and two against Austin P. That first ever meeting back in 1938, me and Stone were not around to see that, but since then they have won five of the last six, including each of the last five meetings. And Dom, don't mistake the fact that head coach for the governor, Scotty Walden, hasn't brought up that SIU has won the last five meetings between these two teams, right? When you have your donors and you have your fans, they're the ones who remember that. They were a part of it. The team necessarily doesn't, but Scotty's most definitely let them in on that little tidbit. The Salukis will be kicking off first. It's Thomas Burks to be the one to kick it off. 
On the other side, Austin P. Their highly explosive offense, one that was historic last year. Second in program history in total yardage and first ever in terms of yards per game. We're excited. The fans are excited. The teams are ready to go. Thomas Burks lining up. Saluki's in their maroon tops and bottoms with white lettering on the other side. Austin P. White tops, red bottoms, and red lettering. For the first time in 2023, we have football here at Saluki Stadium. Taking it out of the end zone is Austin P. Ooh. And being brought down right around the 15-yard line. And that'll be the start of the first drive of the season for Austin P. You mentioned Mike DeLillo in the open, a talented player, big season last year, and a big season on the way for him, you'd expect to. Yeah, Mike is a graduate senior. He's been in this program for a long time. And Scotty Walden dropped a quote when we had a chance to speak to him earlier in the week. He's the toughest quarterback that Coach Walden has ever coached in his entire career. We know Scotty Walden's been all over the place. So for Mike DeLillo to get that nod from a coach like Scotty Walden, it's big time stuff. I expect big things tonight as well. Javon Jackson is the starting running back, the redshirt sophomore, wearing the number 22. He's in the backfield along with DeLillo. First play of the season for Austin P. First and 10 to little handoff and wrapped up immediately was Jackson. Great play to start off the year for Colin Bohanek. Yeah, for Colin Bohanek, man, that's big time. This team's going to be aggressive today, not only on the offensive side of the ball like we're used to, but for the defenses as well. So I look for them, 11, 11 guys rallying around the ball. That's a good start. Second down and 10, no gain on first down. They quickly fired it to the right side and nowhere to go once again. That was Cam Thomas making his first reception of the year, but he's brought down quickly. That's Mark Davis Jr. on the play, giving him a little flex. That's a Florida boy right there. You know they're animated. Big hit. Negative two yards on the play, third and long for DeLillo. Jackson is again is running back to his left. Can Austin P. salvage this first possession? They send Thomas in motion to the left side. DeLillo, pressure coming up the middle. He's forced to roll right, fires it to the right side, and it's caught out of bounds by Hatib Lyles. And that is well short of the first down marker. Yeah, Mike DeLillo's not afraid to get outside of the pocket and, and make plays like this happen. You'd expect a, uh, a doobie count here, not actually to snap the ball. They're going to figure out this is too early to be going it on fourth and four, but hey, we'll see. Fourth and four from inside your own 25. So a good start for the Saluki's defense. The first two plays going back two yards, and you can see the defense loves it, and just a great way to set the tone if you're the Saluki defense. Yeah, set the tone's a good way to put it. I think that's what they want to do, and I think, to be honest with you, that's what just happened. You can show the excitement on the sideline when you're coming off, and that needs to relay over to the offensive side. We'll take it to a break. Early on, the Saluki defense has gotten going, forcing a punt on the first drive of the game. put the Salukis on their own 39-yard line. It's the first possession of the season for Nick Baker in this Salukis offense. First play of the year, pump fake Baker. Left side he goes and he finds his man. That's a new look in the wide receiver room. It's Vincent Davis the third. For Vincent Davis to get the first catch of the game for this Salukis team in the first game of 2023 means a lot. Coach Nick Hill and offensive coordinator Blake Rowland love this kid. They said he's one of the old soul South Florida kids and they expect him to be very active today. Five yard gain on first down. It's the first carry for Elliott this season. Row Elliott takes it to the right side, close to that first down marker. I think something to be noted and something to expect when watching the Southern Illinois offense is there to be plenty of running backs in the mix. When it comes to a guy like Rowan Harry Elliott, he's deserving of maybe 15 carries in a game. And then Justin Strong, again, 10 to 15 as well. There's so many guys that can carry the ball for the Salukis team, and that's just how Coach Nick Hill likes it. They also added Jalen Benefield, the junior from Pearland, Texas. Expects to see him here later today. Lined up in the pistol is Baker. It's another handoff, Elliott. Elliott goes right up the middle, fighting for a couple more yards. 
That's Deontay Cox with the smoke and mirrors motion. Look for him to be the guy right when they're catching Austin P in man coverage to move some of the guys out of the place. And that will open up some gaps eventually for Romeo Elliott to pop one. Got close to that 45 yard marker. Elliott, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, started eight games last year, led the team with 476 rushing yards, averaged over five yards a carry. Second down and six. Baker, play action, has time, looks down the field, goes for Cox, and Deontay Cox can't make the play because it was knocked out before he could get to it. Great play, an acrobatic play by Corey Chapman. Yeah, how about Corey Chapman there, the 5'10", 180-pound senior from Hoover, Alabama. 11 games played last year. The kids got experience. It's a big play against the best offensive player for the Salukis. Shout out to Chapman there. It'll be third and six aggressive. We expect this team to be aggressive as this game goes on and an early start for Baker looking for Cox. Third down, lined up in the shotgun is Baker. They show pressure. Baker looks down the field again. This time to Deontay Cox once more, but over through him. And it'll be fourth down with a flag down around the 48. It's the one thing you're taught as a quarterback. When you have a free play, when you get a team to jump, at least give your receiver a chance there. It's so annoying, I would imagine. Offensive coordinator Blake rolling up here in the booth, probably punched his table through a pen because you got to give him a chance. It doesn't matter if they intercept it. So flag goes against Austin P. but how about that two deep targets in a row to Deontay Cox on consecutive plays? Yeah, Dominic, it seems like they're looking for a second completion, and I wonder why that is. Can you let the people in on what two completions means for quarterback Nick Baker? Nick Baker enters this game two completions away from breaking the all-time record in this category for the Saluki, someone who has been a part of this program for years now and has had such an excellent career, and he's close to history as well. Here we go, third and one. It's a handoff up the middle. Elliott makes a man miss, or rather strong. Strong tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, close to the first down marker. We'll see which way the officials mark it. Wow, very tight margins here, but they're gonna move the chains. Dominic, I've been impressed so far with Corey Chapman. I might unofficially give him the tackle there because he's the one who made Justin Strong redirect, have to go the other way, and they almost caused a fourth down. See that play again, Justin Strong getting his first action of the season. Now it's a pitch to Strong to the left side. And he is wrapped up quickly by a pair of defenders for Austin P. I don't necessarily know if that was a pair. That might just be Sam Howard looking like two people. He's just so big. Get a look at number four, playing that field linebacker. He's even able to cover some receivers. We talked about that earlier. Baker quickly fires it. Isaiah Hartra, beautiful move for the first down by Hartra. Just a simple stick concept there, right? If you can get some off leverage by that outside backer, that safety is maybe a little too deep, you just take the free candy there. That's Isaiah Hartrup. All you want to do is put the ball in his hands and let him go to work. Someone they expect to take a big lead this season. Only played one game last year. That was against SEMO, the home opener. Had a red shirt. His freshman year back in 2021, played 13 games, was second on the team with 43 catches over 500 yards. Lining up the shotgun is Baker. They send Davis in motion. Nick Baker looks across the left side, and that's a catch, and it's a touchdown for the Salukis, the first one of the season, the tight end, Ryan Schwindeman. That is beautifully done from the Salukis, and Nick Baker got kind of tight there from the safety, but he saw what he needed to see. Obviously, you're running a double wheel concept, so you want to space this defense out. Bring that corner all the way over to the sideline. Safety not quite there. Fit that right in the window. It's a dart from Nick Baker there. Schoenman played three games last year and now already has a touchdown, but there is a flag back at the 29-yard line, drawing boost from the Saluki crowd. There is nothing like getting your first collegiate touchdown called back. Ryan Schwendeman even made it all the way to the bench, celebrating with some of the teammates. Sorry, buddy. Get back on the field. We got to do it all over again. So a bittersweet start there for Schwendeman. Thought he had the opening score of the 2023 20, season. Everyone's celebrating, but then the flag 
brings it all back. So Baker's back on the field. Our apologies to the Swendeman parents here. So excited, probably jumped all off the couch, the entire family, but it uh, didn't happen. First down now, Baker looks right, fires it to his right. That's Jalen Benefield showing all of his shiftiness to get close to the 28-yard line. I think one of the keys for this Austin P defense as well is to tackle in space. And they more than likely have all of the guys to do that. When you look at playing that 3D, that blanket coverage, it's because coach is confident they can run the alley and wrap up, make tackles in space. Play action, here's Davis, and he's hit hard, and the ball is loose. Both teams fighting for it. It looks like the Slugs are able to get to it, but they mark it as incomplete. A heavy hit there against Vincent Davis. Yeah, this replay is going to be a little tricky. I think this one's going to be marginal, whether Nick Baker threw it in front of his body or behind the line of scrimmage. This one's going to be close. Aggressive defense by Austin P. You can watch that play again. You can tell number five, Isaiah Hartrup, probably with a missed assignment. Your job there is to take the most dangerous man, and that was the corner. That was Javon McIver Jr., the redshirt sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, applying the hit stick there. Third and long for Baker and company, and whistles are blown. Nick Baker looking a little frustrated right there. Maybe it wasn't the read. Maybe he threw that bubble out there a little too early. But Dominic, if, if I know this Saluki team and I know Nick Hill, he loves the third and long, especially in plus territory. So we're sitting at the 30-yard line. I do not expect him to back down from this. I expect them to try to get this first down, maybe some sort of shot down the field. We've seen uh, quite a few of those shots already. Deontay Cox on the receiving end of a couple. Swindeman on the play that led to a touchdown that was taken off the board. So several opportunities down the field already for Nick Baker, the senior at 5'9", coming back once again, someone that threw for over 2,700 yards a season ago, 20 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and is one of the leaders of the Saluki offense. Not only a leader of this offense, he's a leader in Saluki history when it comes to completions. He now, with four receptions so far in this game, becomes the all-time leader, and that's big for Nick Baker entrenched in Saluki history from here on out. I know his high school coach, Derek Leonard, is in attendance. I know Zach Grant, the Saluki wide receiver coach, is a Rochester fraternity member. Curtis Baker, his father, Nancy Baker, his mother. To know that their son now is entrenched in Saluki history is a big, big thing. Proud of Nick, and uh, I think he wants more than anything to win this football game for the guys, and Austin P is more than up for the task. Austin P, who we talked about, their highly explosive offense, couldn't get anything going on their first drive, but have responded well here after getting their backs against the wall in their own territory. Had that flag, marking off the touchdown, and since then have been able to keep the offense quiet for the Slugies. Like we said earlier, only eighth meeting all time between these two programs. First one in 31 years, and like we mentioned, a season opening crowd, a good crowd here in attendance at Saluki Stadium. The energy is here, first football game of the season, and we expect it to be a good one between both the Governors and the Salukis. It's the first game of the season. It's also the first third and long and plus territory. So looking for some sort of drop back pass here. And you have Isaiah Hartrup down to the field. Deontay Cox to the boundary. Anytime you have a single receiver to the boundary, that's somebody that you have to look for here. So Deontay Cox might be the guy here. He's alone at the top of the screen. Elliott will be the running back for the Salukis. It'll be third and 12 from the Austin P 30 yard line. Can Baker come up with some magic here to move the chains? He lines up in the shotgun. Elliott now to his left. He looks over to the sideline. Vincent Davis and Isaiah Hartrup to the left of the line of scrimmage along with Aiden Quinn. Here we go, third and 12 for Baker in the Saluki offense. He drops back to the 39, that pass goes out to the right side. Elliott keeps his footing and now gets out of bounds. A flag is thrown, but the Austin P defense got right to him, but we have to wait and see what the flag is. Yeah, it's either that defender leading with the crown of his helmet or that's Deontay Cox getting a little handsy with the holding. Officials huddled up on the far side, big call here. He 
you get a sense when you had Deontay Cox tucked into the boundary, they were going to go that way. Tried a little slip scheme to Romir Elliott, who's great in space, has phenomenal hands, but Deontay Cox lackluster on that block there. The flag is against the defense, so a frustrating moment there, Stone, for this Austin P defense. You get in the right position, you think you make the stop, and instead it goes the other direction. So a couple of frustrating flags on both sides on this drive. Yeah, I guess uh, we're all level, right? We're all squared away, eye for an eye. You had the touchdown called back, and now you give them free first down on a third and forever. It's very, very frustrating. Scotty Walden, the head coach for Austin P in his fourth season, has done a great job in turning around this Austin P program. He was hired in November of 2020 as the 21st Austin P head coach, and since then they have had a complete turnaround. They were 1 in 45 from 2013 to 2016, and the season since 2017, 41 and 28. And it takes a guy like Scotty Walden to do that, right? A rah rah get these guys and completely change the culture and it's evident that's what he's done. Austin P is a great football team and anytime an opposing coach, no matter the conference, sees them on the schedule, it spells trouble. You know, you have a lot of guys to deal with and of course the graduate senior quarterback. So this Austin P team is more than dangerous. When you look at the other sideline, Nick Hill once again lead the way for the Slokies in his eighth season with the program as the team's head coach. He signed an extension last year through 2026 as we'll get a chance to take a look at that critical cool play one more time. So for Nick Baker here, you're trying to keep your eyes down the middle of the field and squeak it out there. But yeah, it's, it's pretty evident, evident. Sedarius Doss in a spot like that leading with the crown of the helmet is something that obviously we're prepped to keep an eye on up here in the booth. And, and when you see the replay there, it was uh, pretty clear. Slugie's in the red zone for the first time here in 2023. 20, Baker lined up in the pistol, first and 10. Hand off right side, Elliott bursting speed and Elliott gets close to the five yard line on that first down carry. I'm just so entertained by the fact number four for this Austin P, one of those Mike backers, the guy who also plays the field, is involved in every play. That's what J.J. Clark, the defensive coordinator, talked about with us. He said Sam Howard just likes to put a hat on a football. He likes to be involved. He likes to push the pile. He just likes to be a guy on the field that offenses are afraid of, and he's showing that pretty early there. Already three carries in the game for Elliott. He's again behind Baker here on second and short. Hand off right side. Roe Elliott cuts his way into the middle and gets it inside the five. And that's going to move the chains there for a fresh set of downs. First and goal. And I think for Blake Roll, the offensive coordinator for the Salukis team, you can have some fun. This is when you become an actual artist. You have the defense at your whim. You know what you're going to get, right? You're going to get these guys scooted up eye to eye. You're going to see some man coverage here. And as an offensive coordinator, there's a lot you can do, especially with the amount of skill players you have on the field right now in Maroon. The Salukis bring in right guard Sam Newman, the senior from Winnie, Texas. First and goal from inside the five. Baker with Elliott behind him. And whistles are blown. A timeout is called by Austin P with 7.43 left to go here in the first quarter. And the Salukis looking dangerous on the offensive side. The defensive quarter coordinator there, J.J. Clark, looking frustrated. Didn't like the look that he put out there against what Southern Illinois had put out there. Get everybody regrouped, give them a squirt of water, and, and make sure that you have the right play call going into this. It's been a balanced approach on the offensive end so far, Stone, for this Lukies team. They have ran the ball six times, four carries for Elliott. He's got 20 yards already. Strong has two attempts through the air. Baker is three for five for 17 yards. Yeah, and for some of those coaches that are watching at home, one thing that I want you to look out for with the Southern Illinois football team, especially the offense, is how many formations they put out there. It's more easy to compare to an NFL team than it is a bunch of college team. You're going to get 12 personnel, right? You're going to even get 13 personnel when they're throwing an extra lineman to 11 to empty. They like to mix it up. There's a plethora of things they can do, and they're confident in doing all of them. Team's offensive coordinator is Blake Rowland. As SIU gets ready for a first and goal opportunity from the four. Cox is to the left of the line in his scrimmage. He's in motion now. Baker hands it off. Elliott. Tries to cut his way inside. Good move to get it back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and goal. 
a chance on the way for Ellie. That was his fifth attempt of the game. Nowhere really to go that time around, though. It's pretty hard to miss Javon Young, number three, one of the three techs for the governor. 6'2", almost 300 pounds. He's a grad senior. So many games, so many experience playing football, especially in the trenches. And it, it, like I said, it's hard to miss him here, him pushing Romier to the outside. It's strong as the running back now. Baker rolls. Baker tries to run now. Up the middle he goes. Still holding on to it. Now throws wide open in the end zone for a touchdown are the Salukis. First one of the season for Baker as he went to the right side and found his man, Justin Strong. Justin Strong, obviously this play started out him running a flat route, but what happens? The improv king a little bit of magic there from Nick Baker to make everybody miss, obviously. So you watch Justin Strong here. He's got a simple flat route. If you create separation early, you let him have it. Obviously, he didn't. Nick Baker making not one, not two, not three, not four, not five guys miss. Six guys miss, and he finds number six, Justin Strong there. That's a big time play for Nick Baker. Bungard on and drills the extra point. What a start to the season for the Salukis on both sides of the ball. Nick Baker connecting with Justin Strong for the team's first score of the 2023 season. Justin Strong on the receiving end of it. J. Evans seems to always get himself involved in the right times during games. The Salukis have a 7-0 lead after Justin Strong was found in the end zone by Nick Baker for the first passing touchdown and first receiving touchdown of 2023 as the Salukis get ready to kick things back off with Thomas Burks. Can Austin P find a response after going three and out their first drive of the year and a long long drive on the defensive end that led to seven for SIU. So far, 46 total yards for the Salukis, just six for the Governors. Burks to kick things off. And it goes all the way back to the end zone. They decide to take a knee that time. So 6.57 left to go in the first quarter. This offense that last year averaged over 31 points a game looking to get their first first down of the year. Yeah, Dominic, we talked about the experience the governors have in the backfield, right? Mike DeLello, you talk about a guy like Javon Jackson, a redshirt sophomore who's been in the system for three years. And then the senior, C.J. Evans, who also gets involved in every single game from them in all facets. I expect if somebody told them, Hey, guys, we have six yards. They're going to pick it up here and try to make a statement. Javon Jackson will start the drive as the team's lead, running back behind DeLillo. DeLillo, someone who had a historic year last year, responsible for 29 total touchdowns, 21 passing, as well as eight rushing. A talented player that can do it all for the Governors. First and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Three defensive linemen in there for the Salukis. Hand off up the middle, nowhere to go once again for Javon Jackson, wrapped up quickly up the middle. Yeah, so just a simple inside zone there. You had 23 coming on a swiper, just a little too slow there, allowed for that defensive lineman to penetrate a little early, causing that play, obviously, to go nowhere. So it's second down and 10. They go through the air. Delillo now takes a deep shot down the far side, looking for Goodman, but it's just out of his reach. It'll be third down. Trey Goodman, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. They wanted the deep shot there. He nearly beat his man, but the throw was just out of his reach. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think DJ Johnson there, the senior corner for the Salukis, he's got away with the hold there. From up here, you saw the jersey being grabbed a little bit. It's a good ball for Mike Delillo. Got away with one there, but 
DJ Johnson is one of my favorite players on the Saluki defense. He's been to so many schools. He's so old, and he knows the game so well. They talk about his football IQ every single time his name comes up. Third and 10, Javon Jackson joining DeLillo in the Governor backfield. He drops back to the 15. DeLillo, wide open man is Goodman, but he overshot him. Nearly the same exact play that they just ran a play ago. Goodman was wide open, but they couldn't connect, and it'll, it'll be a forced to punt. Trey Goodman, we are all sorry, young man. He probably won't sleep tonight if they lose this football game. You got to give him a chance there if you're Mike DeLillo. Two back-to-back -back missed opportunities for the Governors. That's going to haunt them on the sideline, and I'm sure they're going to hear about it. Three plays, two incompletions, and... They'll just be thinking about what it possibly could have been as Riley Stevens comes on for the second time here today. Dayton Mitchell, the 5'11 sophomore, back to return for the Salukis. He'll t let it take a bounce around the 36-yard line. It'll go out of bounds right around there. So if you're Antonio James, the defensive coordinator for the Salukis, a lot to be happy about so far with how your defense has started their 2023 season open. Yeah, you're playing aggressive, and I think that's typically how the Salukis want to play on the defensive side of the ball. You have secondary members that can run alleys and make tackles in space, and you saw them doing that. They're very hands-on. A lot of man coverage from this team. It's a great start for the Salukis. I don't think you could have drawn it up any better. Baker gets set to come back on the field. Four for six through the air so far. 22 touchdown, or 22 yards and a touchdown as the Salukis lead seven to nothing. Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Mm -hmm. Coach Reed, you don't need to get... Imagine. Imagine new beginnings. Imagine discovering new ways to feed the world. And imagine telling stories that need to be heard. Imagine fighting for social justice and imagine traditions that bring us together. Imagine unique environments and imagine going from the classroom to the boardroom. Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Imagine the possibilities. Dear Sharp Curves, don't spin your wheels. Toyota has more all-wheel drive sedans than any other brand. So you can bet your bottom dollar that we're sharper than ever. Cause we got traction, baby. Yours, Toyota Sedans. Right now, get 3.99% APR for 48 months on a new Toyota Corolla, BZ4X, RAV4, Highlander, or Tacoma. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The valley runs deep. We have all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper. Nick Baker and the Saluki offense back on the field, and Stone, what a start it's been on both sides for this team. A long drive a couple possessions ago that led to a score on a Justin Strong touchdown reception, then the defense forcing their second straight punt. As a quarterback, you're allowed to play three. You know the Austin P defense and that sideline are down in the dumps with a big missed opportunity, so I think this offense is going to be pretty aggressive here on this drive. It's been a field to start off the drive, and he goes out of bounds right around the initial line of scrimmage. Listed as the number three running back on the depth chart behind Elliott and Strong, but someone they like a lot. He was at Eastern Illinois from 2019 to 2022, played a total of 31 games during that span, ran for nearly 1,200 yards. More depth for Baker in his backfield. 
Now they have two running backs in the backfield along with Baker. It's Benefield and Elliott. Second down and 10, no gain on first down. Play action, they fire it to Benefield left side. He gets across the 40, still going past the 45, and Benefield's showing some of that explosiveness. This team likes a lot from him. Yeah, I talked about it earlier, right? The plethora of backs they can implement in a game plan and use them all, right? You have Romir Elliott to start the game. Justin Strong comes in, catches the touchdown pass, and Benefield just making plays left and right, comes to the sideline to get a score. Running back coach telling him, hey, stand on my hip. You're going to go here in a second. In a video done by our very own Luke Martin over in Suzuki Athletics, he talked to Larry Warner, who highlighted the different personalities in this running back room that are providing plenty of depth, but a lot of different looks in that crew. Baker rolls out left, goes across the body, and that is caught by Hartrup. It was deflected up in the air for a moment, but it falls in the hands of Hartrup, and it's a big play there on first down. It was Jaden Barnes who had a chance, or rather Jose Knifley Jr., the senior from Bowling Green, Kentucky Stone, that had his hands on it but couldn't corral it. Second down, handoff, left side. That's a first down and a few more yards after that. And this Sluky offense can't seem to do no wrong through their first two drives so far as they are in Austin P territory and they move the chains again. It seems like they're all pretty accustomed to improvisation, right? Making plays on the fly. Isaiah Hartrup. Ball fell in his lap right there and he made the most of it, moved the chains here. This is a Saluki team that had a sour taste in their mouth after their season opener last year down in San Antonio against Incarnate Ward. Dante Cleveland talked about it. Just wanted to get that taste out of their mouth and start the season fresh. Here's Vincent Davis, hard to bring down, got across the 35 yard line that is tackled. A couple different players there for Austin P. Vincent Davis is a superstar loading for the Salukis team. South Florida kid, you can see the speed, it just pops off the screen and he's young, right? So he's got a lot of time to learn the plays and get everything down. Huge fan of Vincent Davis and I think for defenders, you're not a fan. He gained four yards and first down, lining up in the shotgun is Baker. He handed off to Strong and he had nowhere to go. What a play on the defensive side by Austin. Pete Tyler along the middle linebacker, graduate student from Cincinnati, making the play there. Yeah, that's an awesome play by Tyler Long, stumping him on a very key down on second and 10 here. Now you create a third and long, love that. And now you have an offense, not really sure what they want to do, right? If you're Nick Hill and Blake Rowland, you're trying to get a look on what they're doing defensively. Defense, advantage right now. Deontay Cox alone on top of your screen. Multiple targets, but no catches so far. They look his way again, and he's somehow able to bring it in. It was just a little bit ahead of him, but Cox catches it and gets the first down. Yeah, didn't need two hands, only needed that right one there. Deontay Cox, a playmaker through and through. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Dominic, when big plays happen, look for number two to be involved. That's a giant third and 10. The Baker and Cox connection, something that goes all the way back to 2015, both went to the same high school. It was Cox that originally got the opportunity to start. Baker was just a backup quarterback at the high school in 2015, but was able to throw his first career touchdown on a trick play to Cox. And ever since then, they have built a strong connection. And I asked them the other day, one word to describe each other. They both had the same word for one another, dynamic. Baker, he's got Cox again, and he can't make the one-handed grab. The throw is a little bit behind him. Baker wants it back. It could have been six. All right, so pretty evident now that Deontay Cox is a righty, right? Caught that slant with his right hand, dropped that wheel route with his left here. There are so many missed opportunities earlier in this game, Dom. That's a smoke and mirrors where you're going to pump that tunnel screen. You're going to pump that now screen, and you're going to have that wheel slip right as that corner comes down. Drew it up to perfection here. Missed opportunity for the Saluki's Deontay Cox. So it'll be second and 10, first game of the season. You can expect some of those mistakes, trying to limit those as the game goes on. But first time they're facing a team other than themselves as it's Benefield getting across the 20. A couple more yards after that, it'll be third down. Guess who? That's Sam Howard, that linebacker for the Governors, just getting involved as he always does, keeping that to a minimum. Big third down on the way. Benefield remains in the backfield along with Baker. Cox at the top of your screen once again by himself. 
Baker across the middle. He's got his man Vincent Davis inside the 10 for a first down. Yeah, that's great coverage there by the defense, but for Vincent Davis and Nick Baker on the same page, that's a mature play from Nick Baker, right? You start your progression on the right side of the field, go through one, go through two. Well, here comes three on the back side there, fit it right in the window. Mature stuff from number eight. A strong start by the offensive line for SIU. They've been extremely happy with the results they've seen from their big group up top. And it's not just the starting five. Nick Hill loves the depth that they have at the offensive line position. First thing goal from the seven. Baker, play action. Crossed the middle, took a deflection. He was looking for Cox. It was a slant route by Deontay. And he was open for a second, but he never got past the line of scrimmage as it took a deflection. It was Knifley that was there. Yeah, Knifley always seems to be involved in a play. We've seen him in the backfield tonight, tipping balls, chasing receivers down around the perimeter. Knifley's a guy who's impressed us pretty early on, and I know he means a lot to this team. You can see the reaction on the sideline when he makes plays. Rel Elliott's back in to the game. Six carries so far, 24 yards. Second and goal at the seven. It's a handoff right side to Davis, and Davis powers his way to right around that two-yard line. They have been creative in using Vincent Davis so far. When you talk about being a defensive coordinator and being J.J. Clark, the governor's D.C., it's a headache to try to account for every skill player the Saluki team has and implements. I mean, that's Vincent Davis, right? You've got to be worried about him hitting the seam, catching a post ball. Maybe one of those wheels or a bubble screen, but when he runs inside the zone, there's just really nothing you can do. You didn't game plan for that. I saw you could let this go down to the triple zeros if they want to. They don't. Baker, play action. He's got his man. That's Cox. Makes a move. Cox gets one yard short of the end zone, and that is how the first quarter will end. The connection between Cox and Baker on point that drive, but it falls one yard short of pay dirt that time around. After the first 15 minutes of play, it's Justin Strong and Nick Baker is the only score of the game so far as the Salukis lead seven to nothing. Time play for Murmir Elliott, although it wasn't him, it was that offensive line. And earlier in the week, I spoke to offensive coordinator Blake Rowland, and he said, Right now, we're more confident in the offensive line than we ever have been since I've been here. And that's big, considering we talked about week one last season when they got the doors blown off of them by Incarnate Word and Lindsey Scott, the Walter Payton Award winner. They had nine different offensive linemen playing in that game last year. Fast forward to now, they love their five, and they're leading the way right now. A completely opposite start to the season as compared to a year ago. You can watch that play again. Ro Elliott bursting through the middle. Yeah, following big left guard Derek Harden Jr., six foot four, 320 pounds sophomore, leading the way. You're also getting a look at Jacob Coggle, a former Austin P. Governor, leading the way against his former teammates. Big time stuff from the Saluki's offensive line there. 14-0 lead, just three seconds into this second quarter. All Salukis so far against a talented Austin P team that went 7-4 and four a year ago and has the talent on the offensive side of the ball. They lost a couple of their top receivers, but still have a strong wide receiver group, but so far just haven't been able to get that offense in motion as they enter their third drive of the game. Dominic, if you remember we talked about before the kickoff was even launched into the air and we got this game started, we talked about week one being all about execution, and that's all that's going on right now. The play calls coming down from the box are fine. There are open players for the governor's offense. They're just not being hit, and there are a few little things happening here that are, that are preventing them from having a single point on the scoreboard right now, but we talked about execution. That is what they're missing right now. Thomas Burks back on the field for SIU. Mike DeLillo getting ready to re-enter the game so far. Two for four through the air, six yards. They have ran the ball twice for zero yardage. Can they get that rushing game going? Javon Jackson, the only running back to appear so far in the game, but C.J. Evans, another talented running back, 
yet to get a touch so far here tonight. Burks is back on and ready to go. A two score lead for the Salukis here in their home opener in the early part of the second quarter. He kicks it off left side. Can Austin P get something going on special teams here? No, they cannot. Brought down near their own 15 yard line and that's where their possession will start. Love what I'm seeing from both teams in regards to energy levels. They both want to be out here. They both know this is a winnable game. We're getting a lot of guys competing. Even though it's just kickoff and kickoff return, those units trying to make themselves heard. Delo, the graduate student quarterback from Pembroke Pines, Florida. A year ago, 11 games played, over 2,400 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, 11 picks. Also ran the ball 120 times. Has not attempted a rush so far here tonight. First and 10 from inside their own 15. Pressure coming, they fire to the left side. It was a low pass called incomplete. Trey Goodman has been active early, but has not been able to muster up anything on the stats sheet. Three targets, zero catches. Yeah, he's off platform there. Didn't really set his feet before going to the other side of the formation there. Again, another missed opportunity from the governors. He's being guarded by DJ Johnson, the senior cornerback from Indianapolis for the Salukis. Second and 10 for this Austin P offense from Clarksville, Tennessee, making the trip here to SIU. They start the season with four out of their five first games of the season away from home. It's a handoff up the middle, big hole there for a moment as it was CJ Evans getting his first carry of the season. There he is, there's number 12 making himself known here in the second quarter. That's Mr. Branson Combs with a slick little hit stick. There, expect him to get going. He's a guy when he has confidence and gets in rhythm, he's a problem. He makes plays that stand out on the defensive side of the ball. Third down once again for this Austin P offense. Haven't been able to move the chain so far. Can they change that fortune here inside their own 20 yard line? They line up in the shotgun, two receivers stacked on both sides of the field. DeLillo ready, and he hands it off up the middle. Third down run, and he gets across the 20 yard line near that 22 marker, but not too big of a gain yet again on third down. It'll be fourth down and short. Yeah, that's the classic Twin Cities formation, right? Four receivers on the field, and you spread them out as wide as they can possibly go because you need that Sam and that Will linebacker spaced out as well. You need to open up these gaps to run and sort of a draw when you space it out that much, but obviously not the success they were looking for. So Riley Stevens, the punter back out there, redshirt junior at six foot three, kickoff specialist as well from Florida. He redshirt as a freshman at Central Florida before moving to Austin P. Someone who is majoring in finance. Dayton Mitchell, another chance on the other side for the Salukis to return. You know, call for the fair catch right around that 35 yard marker. So again, Antonio James can only be delighted about the performance the Salukis have put on the field so far on the defensive end, forcing three consecutive punts and still not one first down for this Austin P offense that we highlighted as explosive unit coming into the game. But right now, it's all Salukis, 14 nothing through the opening first quarter and few minutes here in the second quarter at Saluki Stadium. Jake from State Farm, I really want that personal price plan. So I'll admit it, I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you do not need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan simply helps you create an affordable price just for you. For real? Who's ready for their jazz bath? No? <laughs> Who is that guy? Jazz bath? Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. So, looking at the new F-150, you guys got a trade-in? Maybe we do. And maybe we don't. As buying coach at Vogler Ford, I help people forget their old car buying habits. When you shop at Vogler Ford, you can get your trade-in value instantly online. And since every new vehicle includes Vogler's lifetime powertrain coverage at no extra charge, you can get the best deal possible. Okay, looks good. So you're wanting another F-150, right? Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. For your next Ford the easy way, you gotta get to Vogler. Those of men and women have worked on projects funded by Ulico. They earn good wages. They have benefits like health care, pension, and they have a voice on the job. 
but far too many working people are falling behind. There's a solution for that. That's why at Ulico, we work every day so that more workers have the advantages that come with a union card. We've been doing it for more than 90 years, and today we're growing stronger and faster than ever. You became a Saluki for life at SIU. Now reconnect with the SIU Alumni Association to find out what's new on campus and influence a new generation of students. Follow the association on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Link up online with alumni groups across the nation. Mentor current students pursuing their dreams. Join us as we show everyone what it means to be a Saluki. Help lead this pack into the future. No boundaries, no limits. The SIU Alumni Association. Go back to the pack. Back here in Carbondale, you can see some of the Saluki faithful in attendance on this season opening night here in early September in Carbondale. It's been all Southern Illinois so far, a 14-0 lead as the Austin P defense comes back on the field led by their defensive coordinator, J.J. Clark. He joined the staff back in March of 2022 to coach linebackers and now promoted in January 2023. So it's his first year in this role and so far his defense hasn't been able to keep the Saluki offense out of the end zone. Can they change it here to start off their third drive of the game? First and 10 from their own 40. Baker rolls right, looks down the field. He's going for Cox. Cox is pushed out of bounds, and a flag comes out late. Two flags thrown. Frustrating moment there for this Austin P defense as Deontay Cox receives yet another target, and it goes against Austin P. Dominic, I know we're obligated to be unbiased and to tell the facts, right? What you saw on the screen here. I'll tell you right now, Javon McIver got robbed there. That's beautiful defense. That's well played. Realized it was a double move. Turned his hips, ran with them. Really unfortunate. Just got a feel for Javon McIver. He's been playing an awesome game. A few goal line stops here, and he gets pegged with that one there. Get up figure out mentally where you're going to at, right? Next play mentality, and I think that's what Javon's going to do, but I'm not going to lie there. I think that was pretty unfair to number one, three. McIver Jr., the redshirt sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, in his first season with Austin P, was playing at the Division II level before arriving here with the Governors. So it's first and 10 in opposing territory. Nifty run so far by Strong, and He'll get across the 45 and a few more yards after that. It's been a busy backfield so far for this Luka team, Stone. Four different rushers, including Strong, Benefield, Davis, and then Elliott. One of the things that Austin P does so well is rally around the ball. They want 11 guys around the ball carrier or the wide receiver when the play is over and something that coach Scotty Walden preaches and preaches and preaches in practice in summer and some of those things. I want 11 hats on the ball. And you saw Kendall Ball, one of the DNs for the Governors, getting involved there. Big play. Both Ball and Howard making a stop there. Second down, they keep it on the ground, and Justin Strong bursting up the middle before being bent by two different Governors. So a good run there on the second down to make it third and short. A good tangle there as well by Garrett Hawkins and company. Could have been a much bigger run if the middle linebacker wasn't there. I think this Southern Illinois offensive line deserves a lot more love than we've given them so far, Dominic. Jacob Coggle, a former governor, as I mentioned, leading the way there. But Derek Harden, that left guard spot. And then on the other side, Chase Evans, who's the leader of this offense. When it comes to the vocal perspective, he's the loudest. He's the one pointing out, talking the most. This offensive line is playing really well right now. Eight yards so far on the drive. Now it's Cox overshot his man, and it's incomplete. This duo has been so excellent, especially last season, but so far here today just haven't really been on point. Yeah, so that's going to go down as a mistake on Nick Baker there, and you can see him looking at the sky. Why? Because it's third and short. And if you're calling a run play, an RPO, on third and short, as a coach, you want that ball handed off. Right, if we were going to throw it, we're going to take a shot down the field. It's only third and two, so you got to hand that ball off knowing you're going forward on fourth there. That's a mistake from number eight. Offense still on the field for fourth and two. Pressure being shown, and it's a trick play as it's a straight handoff or snap to Elliott, and Elliott gets the first down and across the 25. How about that play call by Roland and company as it's Roe Elliott? 
Wow, I'm going to try my best to give that play a name. I cannot wait to check this replay out. I'll call it the Mean Machine, right from the movie The Longest Yard. Number eight right there, Nick Baker. That's Paul Crew. And Romeo Elliott is Burt Reynolds right there with the no look. That's slick. Not sure who came up with that play, but it's genius. But had to make a guy miss, and he did just that. What a gutsy call on fourth down, nonetheless. But it moves the chains. Saluki's in business once more inside the opposing 25-yard line. Hartrup moves over to the left of the line of scrimmage. Baker drops back to the 30, has time. Rolls right, Baker eyes down the field, now makes a man miss and gets across the 20 yard line a few more yards after that. Yeah, you'll take the positive yards, although if you're a coach, you're kind of clinching, right? That's your quarterback right there. That's your senior quarterback, and the last thing you need is for him to come up hobbled, to have to take a drive or two off. But nonetheless, six yards makes it second and half the way. Baker ran the ball 78 times last year for 77 yards, also had two touchdowns. Someone who redshirted all the way back in 2018, took over the starter role in 21, and has fully taken it in his grasp ever since then. Second down now for the Saluki offense. They pitch it now. Hartrup falls his blocker. That was Baker, and then he's brought down before he can get to the 15-yard line. And another strong play on the defensive side of the ball by Tyler Long, the middle linebacker from Cincinnati, Ohio. He was at Norfolk State from 2020 to 2022, and he's been impactful so far. Yeah, Tyler Long on the defense. The opposition being Nick Baker there going for the block there. No contest. Tyler Long making that play look easy. So Long with the stop to force third down from inside the 20-yard line. Benefield's back in the backfield along with Baker. Three wide receivers to the left, Hartrup, Davis, and Cox. Baker looks that way, quarterback draw. Moves it to the right side, but couldn't get to the 15, and is brought down by another strong play by this Austin P defense, who are all to a good start. That was the outside linebacker, Jose Knifley, Jr. Jose Knifley Jr. is obviously a leader on this team. You just watch how excited the team gets when he makes plays. I love what he's putting on tape right now. He's a threat, and he's making his presence known right now. Shouts to Knifley. He's having an awesome game so far. Jake Bumgart, the sophomore from Heron, Illinois, on for his first field goal attempt of 2023, 11 of 17. Last season, this will be a 35-yard attempt. Snap was good. The kick is up from Bumgart, and it is no good. Why left? And for the first time in three drives, the Saluki's offense can't score as the Austin P defense stands on their back and forces the field goal miss. It remains 14-0. Saluki's lead, 14-0, 8.35 left to go here in the first half. Jake Bungard coming on for his first field goal attempt of the season, was not able to connect from 35 yards out. Can that fuel this Austin P offense that hasn't been able to get a first down so far here in the game? DeLillo hands it off up the middle, wrapped up quickly, multiple defenders there for SIU, and it's been an impressive start from this entire group, and especially that linebacker core of Combs, Bohanik, and Barola, all able to limit this Austin P offense. It'll be second down and about eight. They line up in the shotgun. DeLillo, the graduate student, awaits the snap. Holds on to it, runs the option, and nowhere to go yet again. The Saluki swarm DeLillo in the backfield and again. It's that group of linebackers. Combs coming out of that packet, multiple others as well, and it'll be third down. Yeah, that's the kind of football you want to coach, right? Your boys flying around the ball, making plays, celebrating with each other. Look, let's just count the Salukis here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with hats on the ball. It's exactly how you draw it up. And for the defensive coordinator, you love it. The senior running back, CJ Evans, has been playing this entire drive so far for Austin P. At the top of your screen, two wide receivers set, as well as on the bottom. Can they get something here with pressure being shown by the Salukis and too much pressure, free play on the way. They throw it on the run, it's incomplete, but the Salukis jumped offside, just a little bit too aggressive there on third down. A tough spot if you're Mike DeLillo there. You gotta hit the back door, the old whoop de doop and try to get back to the boundary there to make a play. Obviously, easier said than done. 
Don't hate the defensive move there to wrap up Mike DeLillo. Make sure he doesn't get that pass off. Right? It's a free play. You just don't want to see the ball take flight deep down the field. And that time it didn't, but it'll be third down and about five now. So manageable opportunity for DeLillo and this governor's team from the United Athletic Conference. Over 420 yards per game last season, but so far here today, just 14 yards through the opening quarter and a half. DeLillo lines up in the shotgun. C.J. Evans to his right. Third and five, 7.16 to go. He lost the football, is knocked away. The Salukis pounce on it as well. They forced their first turnover of the season. It was Devin Cowan, the senior from North Carolina, knock it away. Yeah, and it seemed like D-tackle number 65, Devin Love, getting involved in scooping that football, giving the Salukis the football, what we think on the 26-yard line, this big time. Sideline celebrating, fans into it. This is awesome. There's Devin Love holding the ball up and get that celebration going. The pressure was there on third down and nowhere to go for DeLillo. It was knocked away in. What a turn of events here for this SIU defense from the field goal miss of possession to go to forcing their first turnover of 2023. And last year, Stone, the turnover numbers were down on both sides of the ball as it was a aggressive year for the offense, but they couldn't really force turnovers on the defensive side, but a good start here in the first half, forcing their first fumble of the season. And now offense is in a good position once again inside the opposing 25-yard line here already. to go here in the second quarter. The Southern Illinois offense coming back on the field with Nick Baker and company. And there's a stoppage of play, so they'll review that. So we'll take it to another break. Saluki's lead, 14-0, 7.09 left to go here in the first half. Romwood Chevrolet in Heron makes it easy to shop online anytime. Shop our entire selection of new and pre-owned vehicles from anywhere. And with new inventory arriving daily and special Romward pricing, our team will always have a deal waiting for you. It's so simple to find your price, get pre-approved, and drive home today. So check us out online at romwardchevy.com and we'll send you home happy. And go dogs! With the Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. You also earn fuel points on every purchase to save big at the pump. The Kroger Plus card. All you do is win big, big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. With the Kroger app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So start your cart today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The valley runs deep. We have all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper. You became a Saluki for life at SIU. Now reconnect with the SIU Alumni Association to find out what's new on campus and influence a new generation of students. Follow the association on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Link up online with alumni groups across the nation. Mentor current students pursuing their dreams. Join us as we show everyone what it means to be a Saluki. Help lead this pack into the future. No boundaries, no limits. The SIU Alumni Association. Go back to the pack. Dominic, I think one of the problems for this Austin Peay governor's offense right now is they're not doing anything on third down. Hitting at a very low percentage. This one's important, right? Third and five, simple drop back, starting your progression off to the right side. And here you get that ball knocked out of your hands. And that's just too pivotal of a moment right there for you not to convert that, or at least not to protect the football and allow your punter to attend the field. And now it sets up the Slokey offense on the opposing 21-yard line, first down and 10. Baker has time, now he has to escape the pocket. Showing off his wheels again. Baker, he'll run it. 
across the 15. Now gets out of bounds around the nine. And Nick Baker, we know about his arm stone, but he's showing off his legs too on that play. Yeah, and he has his ability to do so. Defensive end for the Governors, Travis Bates right there with an awesome play. Has Nick Baker right there in the grass, but number eight doing what he does back improvisation trying to make something happen here you see Bates with his spin move ends up getting arms on Nick Baker but making something happen and of course causing first and goal expect offensive coordinator for the Salukis Blake Rowland to take a shot here to keep the aggression going they have the guys out on the field to do so first and goal for the Saluki offense they send Cox in motion strong is the running back he gets it to the left side Justin strong looking for touchdown number two did he get it waiting for the official signal and he was close one yard short Justin strong inches away from his second score of the game you can watch that play again and Justin Strunk following his blocks and another explosive play by him. Second and goal from inside the opposing five. Under center is Baker. He hands it off up the middle. Strong breaks a tackle, fighting towards the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown. Second of the game for Strong, and the Salukis take a 20 0 lead. Credit to the offensive linemen. They deserve it all right there. Justin Strong finding pay dirt, and he's the one who got them to the one yard line. But let's credit left tackle Jake Green. Let's credit left guard Derek Hart Jr., center Jacob Coggle, right guard Chase Evans, and right tackle Abdu Torre. It's a big time drive from them leading the way, and now find yourself up 21 points. He ran right into strong safety Xavier Smith, but went through him and was able to get into the end zone. Bumgard on for his third PAT of the game that is up and that is good the turnover turns into seven for SIU Justin Strong for the second time here tonight has found the end zone as the Salukis lead 21 to nothing Justin Strong with his second touchdown here in just the first half to extend the Saluki lead to 21 to zero. Here with about five minutes left to play. The total yard is so far 160 total yards for the Salukis. On the other side, just 10 for Austin P. A talented offense that just hasn't had an answer, but they're keeping the energy high on their bench. Long way to go in this game, but they just haven't had a solution so far with the problem being the Saluki. Saluki defense. Burks' kickoff goes through right around the six yard line. A bit of a spin move there, and it's been a good return so far. Still going for a moment there. And now eventually brought down, but overall, a good return to start off for the Governors as DeLille and company comes back on in stone. This offense has had three opportunities so far, but they turned it over the last time and it led to six. Dom, I have a question for you. Go for it. It's 10 yards of total offense with five minutes and 25 seconds to go in the half. Good. It's not great. It's not good. It's not great at all. I, I think it's very surprising for us looking at the live stats that, that 10 was a real number. You would think maybe 100 for a few of the pop plays here. There haven't been any of those. And there's only been 10 yards total for the governors. We're just spinning tires in week one of the season. That's what you hate to see. They send a man in motion, that's Cam Thomas, someone they're really high on. They throw it that direction, and it's caught near the line of scrimmage, but again, not too much yardage there on first down. P.J. Jules, the impressive senior and safety from Orlando, Florida. High praise coming into this season. The stats perform preseason All-American, was a preseason first team All-MVFC player too. Led this team last year with 61 tackles, was well, second team in the conference. Someone you'll hear his name a lot throughout this year. Second down, dropping back to the 10 is DeLillo. He goes across the middle, is tipped up in the air and intercepted. The Salukis forced two turnovers in a row across the 10, and it's still going all the way in for the touchdown. What a turn of events for the Salukis. Dune Smith with the pick six. Off the fingertips 
of an Austin P governor and a, the first interception of the season for DeLillo and Stone. When things are going your way, they're going your way. And right now it's going all Saluki's way. Yeah, that was clearly Austin P's most important drive of the game. And for it to result in an interception, return all the way to the end zone for another touchdown. It's about the worst result you can get in a spot like that. And you got to feel for Mike DeLillo, who is trying to put the ball in his playmaker's hand so they can make plays in space. It's just not really happening, I think, when it rains, it pours, and that what's, that's what we're seeing in Sal right now. Dune Smith fired up on the Saluki bench as the field the extra point is up, and it is good. Jake Bumgard extends the Saluki lead to 28 to nothing, and it's Dune Smith on the defensive side making the difference. The junior from Miami, Florida, was at Pittsburgh from 2019 to 21. He played seven games and started one last year for SIU, and right there, right spot at the right time, and was able to turn it into six. Yeah, right spot at the right time. That's a good way to put it, and Dune Smith walking the crowd right now, letting them know I'm him. Dune Smith pretty animated again, one of the vocal guys on this defense right now. You're seeing high energy, everybody with big smiles on the sideline right now. It is all Salukis, which is odd because when you come into this game, looking at this Austin P offense, we talked about the experience they have and the opportunity that the guys on the outside playing wide receiver had. Once the two receivers last year left, it was a new era. And you had running backs and a quarterback who had been there for three or four years now and you still can't get anything going. You're scoreless heading into the locker room at halftime. They have to make a change here. They have 442 to make that change. This is a Saluki's defense that forged just nine turnovers a year ago, four fumbles, five interceptions. They have two inside the opening 30 minutes of the 2023 season. Thomas Burks back out there once again, wearing the number 97, the kickoff specialist for the team, kicks it away to Austin P. Can they build up something here on special teams again? And the answer is no. They get to the 15 yard line, but nothing after that. It was the redshirt sophomore Cam Thomas taking it out of the end zone, but had nowhere to go once he got to the 15. It's polar opposites going on right now in the box when you look at Austin P's offensive coordinator and Southern Illinois' defensive coordinator. If you're Southern Illinois, that defensive playbook is wide open. You're allowed to dial up some blitzes right now. Get a little reckless, right? You're allowed to give up seven if it push comes to shove. And then if you're Austin P right now, the last thing you want to do is pour salt on the wood. Another chance to take a look at that interception off the fingertips of Javon Jackson, and there is Dune. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Javon Jackson there right off the fingertips. And I talked about when big plays happen, look for number 12. Number 12 was right behind Javon waiting to make a play. Dune Smith coming in and finding pay dirt. First down play from their own 15. It's a handoff over to the right side, close to the 18-yard line. Once again into the game is C.J. Evans Jr., someone who started nine games a year ago, played in 11, ran for 641 yards and had six touchdowns. Yeah, at some point you're going to have to take a shot down the field here, Dominic, whether it's second and about seven or it's third and about one, right? You gotta try to catch the Saluki defense off guard and take a shot down the field. You definitely have the guys on the outside to do that. Look for Trey Goodman here, Cam Thomas, both of those guys can easily take a top off of a defense. Second down and seven after the three yard run by Evans. Play action wide open across the middle and a big play across the 40 yard line that time by Cam Thomas, the redshirt sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. Exactly what we talked about. If you were Antonio Blake, you're allowed to dial up a pressure there and they got caught with a blitz there and that inside slant came right behind the ears. First, first, first down the game for DeLillo and company. Throws on the run, beautiful ball that time to his tight end, Jordan Goko, the graduate student from Clemens, North Carolina, his first reception, and a Saluki is down at the end of that play at the 40-yard line, stopping the play there with right around 4.34 left to go here in this second quarter. And not the guy you want to see on the ground, Mark Davis Jr., formerly at Buffalo. Florida kid, he's been riddled with injuries all the way up until this point, and he was finally healthy coming into this season, so very unfortunate that we're looking at number 17 laying on the turf. He dealt with injuries in 2021, or in rather 2020. He played eight games in the 2021 season with Buffalo. 
had a red shirt in 2019, last year in his first season with the Salukis. He played in 10 games. Good inside though, he's able to walk off on his own power. So we'll see what Mark Davis Jr. is able to do with this game. When this game continues, you can watch that play again. Kind of hard to tell there, Stone, but near that end of that play, just got stuck on that 40 yard line, couldn't regain his footing. Yeah, you're hoping on this human night that it's just a cramp, right? He hopped up pretty quickly and jogged at that sideline, getting the applause from the crowd, and hopefully he can get back out there. And, and It'll be first and 10, 3.16 to go now. It's on the opposing 35-yard line. Finally, this Austin P offense is in Slukey territory and jumping offside was the defensive back. Looks to be Drake Johnson. If you're Drake Johnson, there's one thing you can't do, and that's come up on the television and have a red flag alongside him, right? You just got in the game because Mark Davis Jr. got pulled out, and the first thing you do, not a good look for Drake. Hopefully he can make up for it here. First down and five now from the 30-yard line. They line up in the shotgun. The running back is C.J. Evans once again, who lines up to the left of the Lillo. So far, five for nine through the air, 53 yards. No touchdowns, one interception for the quarterback. Play action, left side they go, and it's dropped on first down. Incomplete, Cam Thomas was the intended receiver, just couldn't bring it in. Yeah, just couldn't bring it in, right? You gotta get the ball in Cam Thomas's hands. Just give him an opportunity in space to make something happen. A simple now screen goes right through the hands, and now we have second and five. Thomas last year had a kick return touchdown and a punt return touchdown as well. Someone who was excellent on special teams trying to take that leap now on the offensive side of the ball as well. Second down and five, Evans is again the running back, play action, they quickly fired to the right side and it's again Thomas, but he had nowhere to go. Is brought down quickly that time on the outside as it'll be third down, DJ Johnson making the stop. Yeah, not just the stop. A hefty stop, laying the wood there. DJ Johnson obviously snipping out that tunnel screen, right? You have that inside receiver whose assignment is to find the most dangerous man, and typically that's the corner. Well, DJ Johnson said not today, sir. The senior who was at Purdue in Iowa, now here at Southern Illinois. Third and six, under 2.20 left to go here in the first half. DeLillo rolls to the left side. Pressure coming, it's Branson Combs bringing him down around the 43-yard line, his first sack of the season. Mama, there goes that man we talked about, big plays and Branson Combs. Those two things going together, and boy, did we just see it play out in real time. That's vicious stuff from 12. Preseason, first team, all MVFC, and there he is there, his explosiveness one of the true things to highlight with them, and it forces a fourth and 15. And Stone, it was first and five after the offside penalty, turns into a 10 yard loss in that drive, and it's gonna be fourth and 15, another tough spot for this Austin P team. Execution, execution, execution. When you look at Scotty Walden right now, giving it to Mike DeLillo, probably because he exited the pocket on the wrong side. Coach telling him, you had your receivers on the other side. Why did you decide to leave the pocket on the left? Again, we talk about execution and coming up big in some of those moments, but they're just showing week one rust. It doesn't seem like it's anything all that big, all that glaring that you can tell from watching the game, but it's the little things that are turning into 28-0 deficit here. What looked to be a promising drive will end in another punt. Riley Stevens, the redshirt junior from Florida, back out again to punt it away to Dayton Mitchell. 148 left to go. Flag comes out as that one is booted away. And takes a bounce towards the 10 yard line, but is stopped at the six, but there was a flag right back at the 41. As we wait to see what the flag is, Branson Combs getting his first sack of the season. Someone who started his career as a wide receiver, made the transition to linebacker, and now has been an excellent one at that. That flag illegal formation against Austin P. One thirty-eight left to go here in the first half and Stone, the yardage differential is a massive one. 160 for the Salukis, 50 for Austin P. And all 40 
So the prior 10 came on that drive right there. So within the last two minutes, they've gained 40 yards, and that's just not what you're looking for when you're down 28-0. And of course, that's saying nothing wise, but they need big plays. They need some of their big players to step up and make those big plays. And right now, it's got to come from Mike DeLillo, and it has to come from the guys on the outside, right? The Cam Thomases, the Trey Goodmans, the guys who have the ability to open up a defense and break a game wide open. They need to show up right now. No reception so far for Goodman. Could be a very different story. There was a couple deep shots in the early part of the game. Those fell incomplete, missed opportunities, and now 28 nothing down. You wonder what this game could have looked like if those turned out to be caught. And after that, who knows? Riley yep. Steven punts it away. Mitchell there to call the fair catch from inside his own 10. And this low-key offense has a minute 32 to try to extend their lead even more than their already four-score advantage. And I expect them to be plenty aggressive with a minute and a half here. You really have nothing to lose with a 28-0 lead. This is when you can pull out one of those gadget plays, right? Maybe a double pass, maybe you want to loop around, an end around, a bubble screen, a fake bubble screen wheel, all of these things that the Salukis are known to do. But Dominic, I think when you're, when you're looking at Austin P offensively, football's very mental. At, at times it's science, right? When you talk about Trey Goodman with that missed opportunity on the far sideline there, to even the game 7-7, this could be a very different ball game. It's the little things that players mentally have to try to endure, compartmentalize, and go on to the next play. It's not easy. Benefield handoff. Got across the five and is met quickly after that by Austin P. So not too much of a gain there on first down as they elect to run. That was the defensive tackle, Javon Young, the graduate student, six foot two, 281 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee. Someone who didn't start the first game last year for this Austin P team, but started the final 10 and appeared in all 11 games. Eight and a half tackles for a loss and 30 tackles total during the campaign for him. They give him just one yard on first down for Benefield, so it'll be second and nine from inside their own 10. Backs against the wall for the Saluki offense after the punt by Stevens. Baker lines up in the shotgun, Benefield to his right. It's another handoff up the middle, and Benefield gets to right about that 10 yard line. Austin P down to one timeout, SIU also one timeout. Let's take a look at number four here. Sam Howard, we mentioned his name multiple times in the broadcast already, but he's involved in every play. It's what he does. Some guys just have the instinct and the knack for finding the football. Number four has a hat on the ball every single play, it seems like. He's vicious. Someone they view as a leader, a captain last season when he only was able to play four games for Austin P, but now back and back in the lineup and leading this group into this 2023 season. And that'll take us down to the triple zeros here in the first half. And Stone, all SIU with the four score advantage. We talked about it raining and pouring, right? Those two go together when you have a 20 zero, 28 0 lead. You're, you're doing nothing wrong, and everything, everything seems to just be falling in their lap right now. I don't really know what you tell the governors in the locker room, but I'm excited to find out what Scotty Walden does. 30 minutes gone, the Salukis lead the season opener 28 to nothing over Austin P. Teams, and he's ready to see this group go to work. First, their work ethic. Um, this offseason, they have been working hard. They came out this summer working hard, and they've been all worked throughout this whole camp. Uh, we get great competition every day going against our offensive line. Um, that's a phenomenal unit that we get to work with every single day, so we're blessed to get that. And then just as a whole, the whole defense has been working and helping us as a defensive line group coming along too. Dante Cleveland is one of the main returners, and after the last scrimmage of camp, when we caught up to him, he senses an improved position. Guys, we got we got some players, you know what I mean, and uh, just that nasty taste that was uh, left in our mouths last year. Um, at the end of the season last year, I remember just losing that game. and was like, man, like, there's no tomorrow. You know, we're not going into meetings. We're not going in uh, watching the, the game. Like, it's done. You got to wait a whole another year. You know, you go you go from training and then the training camp, and then you get another season. And you know, just the guys, you know. I love this group, so. The best teams in the country, you will have multiple rotations Good. that they can use. Good. Sometimes up to 10 to 12 linemen per game. 
Coach James does believe this Saluki team is getting close to that mark. I think we're close to being there. Um, I think we have a lot of guys who've returned. Like you've heard a lot of the names. You know, you throw Devin Love in the mix, you know, coming back from last season um, and some of those freshmen coming up. Uh, we have a lot of guys who've played ball at, you know, at the collegiate level. Some guys are going to be new here. I believe we're getting pretty close to the point where we can have, you know, a 12-man strong cycle in there. Um, there's more names in the group, obviously, who've been working, and, and there are going to be names for you guys here throughout the season as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we just it's a race to maturity, and we got to make sure that we are uh, getting those young guys ready to go and these old guys are ready to lead as well. Mention the returners. Cleveland will be a massive piece. Dewey Green and Cam Bowdry are back. Plus, there will be some major impacts from newcomers like Tim Varga and Devin Cowan. It's their leverage on blocks, uh, shedding blocks, running to the ball. Um, you think of guys like Dewey, who's you know one of our best pass rushers um, coming back this year, really just embracing uh, being a great defensive lineman, being very technically sound every day, working hard. Um, Dante Cleveland played a lot of football for us last year, coming back this year um, you know, for a senior season, having an opportunity now to really make a staple, put his name out there as a guy. You know, He's improved on his block shed over the years, uh, been doing really great. Uh, Cam, you know, Cam is phenomenal. He's phenomenal to be around. He's a great guy, uh, but his work ethic, just watching him run to the ball and chase down guys downfield. Um, you know, when I first got here, that wasn't what Cam was going to do. He wasn't going to do that extra effort, and he started seeing it come out of him last year. And uh, since this spring, you know, he's just been running to the ball nonstop going. Uh, we got the Reeves brothers, you know, Payne's been doing a great job in the middle of the defense, uh, locking down centers, knocking back. He's actually improved his pass rushing a whole lot. His hips have gotten better. Um, Caden Reeves, you know, is a young man who played a little bit for us last year, but loads of talent in there. Um, he could be one of the best guys in this conference if he continues to work throughout the years. Um, but he's, you know, he'll be a guy who gets to get his name out there this year and show what he's capable of. Just starting with somebody, he's a newcomer to the room, but he's old on the team, um, is Lewis Wilbert. Um, you know, he's a young man who transitioned from uh, linebacker to defensive end. Um, he's been doing a great job man just working on his hand placement working on his power with his hips um, he plays with great leverage so he's going to be a good guy and then we got some good transfers that came in for us you know the first one came in the springtime which was uh, Tim Varga he was from Eastern Illinois uh, you know we watched him on tape and you've seen that he runs to the ball he works hard he sheds blocks you know but then when you get Tim here in person I was very surprised by his athleticism his hip movement his creativity and pass rush the way he could flow from move to move um, he really came in made a huge impact um, and then we also picked up Devin Cowan. Devin was a uh, division two you know very highly ranked player at that level um, and he transferred to us here in the summertime he's an edge rusher you know he's a defensive end for us uh, very explosive very powerful with his hands um, very twitchy he's very athletic you know so he's been a great addition to have to the room um, you know he's a guy who can replace some of the pieces that we've lost uh, both of those guys are um, and then those freshmen coming in you know all four of the freshmen that came came in, made a huge impact um, just on, you know, showing out on tape. You know, Gunn is a very powerful player. Um, Carmelo, very, very fluid with his body, hands and hips working together. You can tell he, he's played a lot of football in his time. You know, Amir is a very scrappy player. He plays every position on our defensive line from inside to outside. And he's, you know, going to go hard every single play. And then Jamal Mathis has been a guy who's been an extremely talented player, come in and been able to make plays throughout camp. Still halftime here at Saluki Stadium. Dominic Kosher along with Stone Labanowitz, and it's been all Saluki so far, 28 to nothing, heading into the halftime break, doing it on all sides of the ball. On all sides of the ball, both sides of the balls, the Saluki's having their way. Justin Strong getting things started with an early touchdown reception. This, if you're a coach, are some of your favorite plays of your career when it's all said and done. You have a quarterback, an improv king like Nick Baker, making it happen on a historic night. Justin Strong even looks surprised that ball made it to him. Then here, a off. simple inside zone here. Chase Evans clearing the clutter, getting rid of Sam Howard here. Easy touchdown. Run it up, Salukis. Mike Delello, just a simple drop back pass, folks. This was on third down, right? Just checking it down to the running back. Well, incoming, Dune Smith. I mean, check this run out. Dominic. 
It seems like he used to be a ball carrier back in Florida and Pop Warner in high school as well, making it look easy finding pay dirt. Mike Delello, this was an important play of the game right here. Just checking it down. It was second and about 10. You're in your own territory. The last thing you want to do is give the ball to the defense. And what do they do? Not only give it to the defense, give it to the defense that found themselves in their own end zone. It's tough sledding right now for Austin P. They need to come out of the gates and make plays early on and kind of shift the momentum. Slogies lead 28-0 second half coming to you soon here on ESPN+. Plus. Head coach Scott E. Walden roaming the Austin P sideline. His team trails 28-0 entering the second half and will kick things off to begin the final 30 minutes of play as well. There you can see head coach Nick Hill for the Salukis in his eighth season. And Stone, if you're Hill, a lot to be happy about. You can see the numbers so far, 165 total yards, 95 on the ground compared to negative two on the other side. All right, let's talk about that negative two. We have hundreds upon hundreds of stats people here around us, next to us, all up in the box, and I'm asking them, has there ever been an entire half of football, especially the first one where a team has rushed for, not two yards, but negative two yards? It's, it's, it's almost harder to do than rushing for two, three, four, maybe five yards. So, so that's a glaring stat there. Passing yards, you would expect, right, with a 28-0 lead that Nick Baker has more than 70 of them, but it's been quiet. All facets of the ball have come through for the Saluki, so look for more of that. But some of those stats right out out, stand out, and they're pretty surprising. Vincent Davis getting his first opportunity to return a kickoff here tonight, and he got it to right around the 15-yard line. So here comes Nick Baker in the Saluki's offense. 70 yards through the air so far for Baker, which may seem like a low number and a 28-0 scoreline, but again, a pick six from Dune Smith, his first touchdown, of course, of the season. And then you had the forced fumble leading to a possession inside the opposing 25. That might lead to a little bit lower numbers than you might expect, but still Baker getting the job done. Here he is in the shotgun, first down and 10 from their own 15-yard line. They send one man in motion, that's Davis. It's Jalen Benefield, the running back for the Salukis. It's been a busy backfield so far for SIU. He'll get the handoff, left side. And then he's wrapped up after getting across the 17-yard line. So a short gain on first down for him as it'll be second down now for this Lukey's offense. It was Corey Chapman. We were talking about him earlier. Chapman, someone who's almost everywhere. The safety, impressive player. Baker rolls across the body. He's got his man for a first down. Great throw that time on the run. And that's the starting tight end, Aiden Quinn. Nick Baker's so good at making something out of nothing. Obviously, very evasive and finding your tight end there in the middle of the field. Again, not an easy task, especially on the move. Benefield to the right side. He's wrapped up quickly again. Aggressive defense here to start this drive against the run for the Governors. Tyler Long once again making a difference. Someone who was at Norfolk State for the last couple of years. First year and looking to make an impact in his first game as a Governor. Just two yards there on first down for Jalen Benefield. Came into the game as the number three running back on the depth chart for SIU, along with Elliott and Strong, who have both scored. Shot territory for the Salukis here. Pressure coming. Baker under pressure, and he's brought down for the first time here tonight. That's Corey Chapman, the safety, coming from the backfield and in to sack Nick Baker. Corey Chapman made his presence known early in the game, and here he is to kick off the second half, wreaking havoc. And if you're the Austin Peay sideline, you got to go through Corey Chapman right now. If he's the one making plays, talk it up a little bit. Get everybody involved. This is when you transfer some of the momentum over to your sideline. There is a player down for Austin P at the end of that play, so we'll take it to a break. It'll be third and 16 after the sack by Corey Chapman. Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So hey, Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Mm. Coach Reed, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It helps you create an affordable price just for you. Oh, Coach, it happened again. 
I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. So, looking at the new F-150, you guys got a trade in? Maybe we do. And maybe we don't. As buying coach at Vogler Ford, I help people forget their old car buying habits. When you shop at Vogler Ford, you can get your trade-in value instantly online. And since every new vehicle includes Vogler's lifetime powertrain coverage at no extra charge, you can get the best deal possible. Okay, looks good. So you're wanting another F-150, right? Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. For your next Ford the easy way, you gotta get to Vogler. Those men and women have worked on projects funded by Ulico. They earn good wages. They have benefits like health care, pension, and they have a voice on the job. But far too many working people are falling behind. There's a solution for that. That's why at Ulico, we work every day so that more workers have the advantages that come with a union card. We've been doing it for more than 90 years, and today we're growing stronger and faster than ever. Imagine. Imagine new beginnings. Imagine discovering new ways to feed the world. And imagine telling stories that need to be heard. Imagine fighting for social justice. And imagine traditions that bring us together. Imagine unique environments. And imagine going from the classroom to the boardroom. Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Imagine the possibilities. The injured governor was the cornerback, Javon McIver Jr. Good sign though, he was able to walk off on his own power, so hope the best for their starting cornerback and someone they expect to make a big difference this season. Third and long for Baker. He tries to get out of the pocket, flag is thrown. He's still on his feet. Nick Baker crosses his body outside to Cox. That's incomplete. A flag is down near the 16 yard line at the end of that play. If you're J.J. Clark, the defensive coordinator, you're ready to break your headset. You just can't get your hands on Nick Baker. Luckily for him, one of the offensive linemen did get handsy. We're going to get a holding call that's going to bring this play back. But Nick Baker huffing and puffing now all for no reason. Penalty is declined. So for the first time here tonight, we will see the punting unit for the Salukis, led by their Australian punter wearing the number 99, Nathan Torney, in his second season with the Salukis. His first ever game of football, not just with the Salukis, his first game of football was last year in the home opener, the away opener against Incarnate War down in San Antonio. The very first snap he ever had as a collegiate football player went well over his head. The nightmare start you would have as a first year punter, but here he is, a veteran now in his second season. He's booted that one away. Good punt by Torney all the way back to the 25. And here is Cam Thomas wearing the number eight and he was able to get a few more yards after that. So for the first time here tonight, this defense forces a punt. What can the offense do now? Again, negative two rushing yards in the first half, 52 passing yards, but the big number zero on the scoreboard. Well, your defense did the job. They put you on the field, right? And now it's up to you as the quarterback, Mike DeLillo, to completely shift the momentum. This is the drive right here. It needs to result in a touchdown more than ever tonight. So far, their star quarterback, who was so good a season ago. Again, this is a team that made history last year. They had the second most yards all time for this program, only behind the 2019 team. When they had 4,658 yards in 2019, they had 6,288. Handoff left side, Evans, good run there, and crossed the 35, broke the initial tackle to gain a few more yards. So far on the game through the air, DeLillo, 6 of 11, 52 yards, and that tough break interception that was off the fingertips of Javon Jackson. Yeah, Dominic, they're going to get here 97, Tim Varga. Got a little handsy after showing some frustration, and obviously they're going to yank him out of the game here for a play or two. He's got to sit, soak in the mistake that he made. That's how the Salukis work. And get a free 15 here, and this is the start of the drive that you're looking for. And I, I want to credit head coach Scotty Walden for this. You just watch the offense, post punt return, break the huddle and sprint to the field. If there's one thing that Scotty can do, it's get his guys going. So I'm sure he laid into them in the locker room at halftime and it's paying right now. You're looking at the defense energized. Now you're looking at the offense at midfield. This is going well so far. And instead of being deflated, like you said, energized, they're showing energy on both sides of the ball and it's paid off here so far. Sluki show pressure. 
Handoff left side, nowhere to go for Evans. He is brought down quickly in the backfield. It looks like it was Colin Bohanik, the junior from Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, that's a big play. This defense just seems to get on the other side of the line of scrimmage pretty quickly here. Bohanik with a slick solo there, and the defense rejoices here. You got to get up, try it again, find yourself facing a second and long. Bohanik was second team all Ohio Valley Conference a season ago with Eastern Illinois. First game as a Saluki. Second down, dropping back, pressure coming to DeLillo. He escapes to the right side, looking, throwing, and he's got his man. If it was completed, no, it was not incomplete. Looked to be Trey Goodman they were going for, or rather Cam Thomas, and again, they just can't come up with the connection, and it'll be a long opportunity here on third down. Yeah, your playbook shrinks now, right? You went from third and eight now to third and 15, and, and that is a very big difference. Like I said, that playbook shrinks, there's maybe three or four plays you have for this dialed up, especially at this moment in the game, down four scores. So if, if it's gonna happen, it's gotta happen right now. Cam Thomas has to make up for it, or this has to find the hands of Trey Goodman. Empty backfield for the graduate student quarterback, Mike DeLillo. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Third down and 15. DeLillo drops back to the 36, has time. DeLillo still has time. Nowhere to go with it. Pressure coming, and he's brought down for the second time here tonight. It was the drive of Colin Bohanik as he brings him down in the backfield for fourth down now and a long way to go. And I tell you what, the person who's least happy with Mike DeLillo right now is the governor punter. He's like, hey, man, you backed me up an extra 10, 12 yards. I didn't want that. So now Saluki's getting a little advantage when it comes to field position following this punt here. Riley Stevens on yet again for this Austin P team. And it's a deflating moment there for this group. As you come in to this drive, you force that punt for the first time here tonight. And now on the other side, you send it back to the Salukis. Dayton Mitchell doesn't make a play on it. So Nick Baker and company come back on the field. They dominated the first half, but couldn't on the first drive. But can they make up for it here? 11.05 to go in the third quarter. SIU 28, Austin P 0. A lot to be excited about if you're a Saluki. As you can see there, it's a 28-0 lead. Austin P forcing the stop on the defensive end a drive ago, but couldn't build on it on the offensive side. Baker lined up in the shotgun, handoff, Justin Strong. Two touchdowns so far for Strong that time. He's brought down at right around that 30-yard line. Impressive start to the year, to say the least, about Strong Stone receiving touchdown, rushing one up the middle. Yeah, I'm more so taken away with the fact that Corey Chapman one of the secondary members from this P team jogging off the field hobbled. He's in on every play. Good run from Justin Strong, but Corey Chapman is holding this defense together, although they're staring 28-0 in the face. I love his performance tonight. Chapman is frustrated as he goes to the bench. It's a quick toss to the right side. Strong stays on his feet and is able to go out of bounds, but a flag comes out right when Strong went out of play. This one's going to end up being on either Isaiah Hartrup or Deontay Cox, a simple holding call, which is unfortunate, right? Because whenever you can get that ball in your running back's hands, and he gets closer to that first down marker, and you see that laundry on the field, just a tad annoying. Corey Chapman still on the opposing bench. Hope for the best for him as, like you've been talking about, he's someone who has been fun to watch so far here tonight, and he had the sack a drive ago. The senior from Hoover, Alabama, last year, an impact player, 67 tackles, two picks as well. And over the final seven games, when he really emerged as a starter for this group, started to have a really big outburst on the defensive side. Over eight tackles a game, one and a half tackles for loss per game as well. Would hate to see him not be able to come back out there for this Austin P defense that desperately needs him. So Baker back out there after the flag. It is a second and long now. Second and 17 to be exact. Baker in the shotgun. Quarterback draw up the middle he goes. Baker to the right and he's brought down. Good tackle that time on the right side by Austin P. That was Michael Rutland Jr., the graduate student from Mount Juliet, Mount Juliet Tennessee. Yeah, your, goal's here just to, your goal here is just to make it third and manageable, right? So we're going to get a QB draw just to make it third in the sticks. That's it. 
Very smart right defense thinks you're backed up. Here comes the pass. Well, QB draw. Now we have a third and ten. So good play by the free safety wearing the number two, Rutland Jr. First season with Austin P. Baker. Pressure coming, throws it right side. He's got his man. And for the first time in a long time, it looks to be Deontay Cox going out of bounds for a first down. Yeah, this was all anticipation here. You had Deontay Cox to the boundary by himself. Just a simple stick route. But what you're going to see here is Nick Baker taking that three, no hitch in his drop, and just letting that ball fly before Deontay Cox even came out of his break. It's third and ten. This is exactly what you want to see from your quarterback here. It's a clean drop from Nick. Great pass pro from Justin Strong stepping up. And yeah, this ball's out before Deontay Cox even comes out of his break. It's a beautiful conversion on third and ten. When talking to both Deontay and Nick earlier on in the week, they both highlighted how they're just trying to cherish this last year together. They've been suiting up together for years and years now. One more year to go as this pass goes to the left side. Strong, he's been busy this drive. Cuts his way to the right and got across the 45-yard line. Again, we've, we've spoken about it a lot tonight, Dom, but the plethora of running backs and skill players they have that can do pretty much everything, right? You're looking at a running back there Catching a now screen from the outside, right? Making plays in space. Just put it in their hands and let them do the rest. There are too many dangerous guys on this offense for a secondary to keep up with. And Austin Peay's secondary is more than talented. SIU's had six different rushers in this game and six different receivers. So far, Cox leads the way with his 31 yards. Strong now, multiple catches in the game to go along with Cox and company. Empty backfield for Baker on second and seven. He looks to the left side, and that took a deflection. He was looking for the running back, Jalen Benefield. So right when you talk about trying to get those running backs involved in the receiving game, they looked for Benefield, but it was deflected at the line. Good play by the Austin P defense. If you're a corner or just any member of the secondary for Austin P, the amount of different numbers that step in front of you on a drive, on a play-to-play -play basis is probably confusing. You would think, okay, is this a backup third string wide receiver or is this their second string running back you're just not sure and by the time you figure it out he's got the ball in his hands they're not there though third and seven baker has time scanning all of his options points down the field he's got been field wide open he makes the catch and he goes stays in bounds and he's all the way into the end zone Jalen Benefield for the first time this season, and Baker's second touchdown of the game gives the Salukis a 34 nothing lead A little telepathy action there from Nick Baker and Jalen Benefield, right? Nick giving him the finger. Hey, hey, turn that up. Let's make this happen. Benefield does as so and obviously puts the burners on after. That's awesome stuff. It seemed like just a simple hitch route for Benefield pretty early on in that play. But once Nick told him to go, he went. The rest is history there. That's an awesome play. Again, more improvisation from number eight in the Saluki offense. The trio in the backfield of Strong, Benefield, and Elliott have combined for four of the team's five touchdowns so far here tonight. The extra point is up and good, and the Salukis with 7.50 left to go in the third quarter lead 35-0. Chevrolet in Heron makes it easy to shop online anytime. Shop our entire selection of new and pre-owned vehicles from anywhere. And with new inventory arriving daily and special Ron Ward pricing, our team will always have a deal waiting for you. It's so simple to find your price, get pre-approved, and drive home today. So check us out online at RonWardChevy.com and we'll send you home happy. And go dogs! With the Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. You also earn fuel points on every purchase to save big at the pump. The Kroger Plus card. All you do is win big, big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. With the Kroger app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So start your cart today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The valley runs deep. We have all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper.
A 54-yard touchdown pass from Baker to Jalen Benefield in his first game as a Saluki has given SIU a 35-0 lead with 7.50 left to go here in the third quarter. Dominic Kosher as well as Stone Lebanowitz here in the booth for you on ESPN+. Plus. Excited to call tonight's season opener for both of these teams. And Stone, another good drive for the Saluki offense. And it was ended by another running back making a difference. That time as a receiver, Jalen Benefield. Yeah, again, we've talked about the plethora of running backs and, and all of the things they can do for this team. But at halftime, when you're looking at the 70 yards that Nick Baker had, you're wondering, hmm, we're up 28-0 and I have 70 passing yards. Seems a little odd, so that 54 yarder there to Benefield helps that a little bit, up to 156 yards total. Efficient throughout the night, 13 of 20, two touchdowns, obviously no turnovers, completing 65% of his passes. It's been a pretty clean game, but that 54 yarder there helps a lot. Jeffrey Wells that time on special teams making the tackle, a senior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Someone who's majoring in pre-civil engineering. Last year played seven games in that time, getting his first real impact on the game on special teams. But here comes an Austin P offense, still looking to get going. DeLillo, 52 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. On the ground, that's where they've really struggled. DeLillo counted for negative 27 yards so far rushing. Evans, 14 rushing yards. And then Javon Jackson, just two carries, no yards so far for him. They line up in the shotgun, fire it to the far side. Goodman there, good spin move and a first down and more. That is Trey Goodman's first real impact here tonight. His first catch, and he was someone we highlighted as one of the top receivers on this Austin P team. They're able to make the grab and get the first down. Yeah, Trey Goodman's fast, and I'm sure they wish, looking back, that they got the ball in his hands earlier in this moment in time right now. 359 yards receiving a year ago, also four touchdowns. Right side, that's intercepted. The pass goes straight to DJ Johnson, the third turnover of the game forced by SIU. DJ Johnson having himself a night, getting the applause from the fans. They now know who he is. Again, DJ's one of those guys who's so experienced here. He has wandering eyes and he falls off that outside receiver and slips right in there. That's the crowd have it. Hey, how about me? And gives him the scream. DJ Johnson's having a phenomenal game. Johnson started his career at Iowa, was there from 2018 to 2019 before transferring over to Purdue for one season in 2020, has been at SIU ever since. And again, we talked about it. This defense only forced nine turnovers a year ago. They have forced three here tonight against a very talented Austin P offense. Again, for all the huffing and puff puffing that the general public does about the transfer portal, right? Everybody feels as if they have some sort of complaint on how it's not good. But you look at a guy like DJ Johnson, who's now on his third school, and he benefits the Southern Illinois team. They love him. They've taken to him. He's become a leader. And it's just awesome to see the benefits of the transfer portal. Baker down the field. Isaiah Hartrup, acro acrobatic grab. And it came out of his hands. And it looks to be recovered. And it is by Austin P. How about that? A good play by Isaiah Hartrup. But he lost the handle of it. And it fell into the hands of what looked to be Tyler Long. And for the first time here tonight, the Salukis turn the ball over. It seemed like where Isaiah Hartrip had caught that ball, he wasn't comfortable, wasn't able to bring it in, tuck it into his body. Therefore, somebody popped it out, got a hand on it here. It's an awesome play from Nick Baker. Yeah, just wasn't able to corral it. Hartrip there never really had possession, so he's tough to call a fumble in a spot like that, but that's tough. It's good to see from the Austin P defense, though. That was Christian Lewis, the graduate student and cornerback from Pennsylvania that was able to force that ball out and force the first turnover of the game against the Saluki offense. So a positive sign and a positive stepping stone for J.J. Clark's group. Can they turn it into success on the offensive end, their co-offensive coordinators, Jared Caster, as well as Lanier Sampson. This is when you take a chance here, Dominic. They send a man in motion. That's Cam Thomas. Hand off. Now he keeps it, fires it behind what well, looks to be the line of scrimmage as it goes out of bounds. That is Thomas. They want him to be active, and he's been busy so far. He went out of bounds there after a few yards. Good play call. Executed it well, right? Kind of that RPO, they call it. Different version of a triple option there, but DJ Johnson says, no, 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 folks, not today. I am still here. The finance manager gets two yards there. Second down and eight from inside their own 30. DeLillo lines up in the shotgun. Two receivers on both sides of the line of scrimmage. 
Three defensive linemen there for the Salukis as he quickly fires into the left side, a low pass, and it falls incomplete. A tough play there for Trey Goodman to try to bring in, so it'll be third down. And, and again, a tough spot here for this offense. They've been in a lot of third and long opportunities and from their own territory, and this one no different. You're in a tough spot here if you're Mike DeLillo, trying to be a superhero, right? Trying to make something happen, get balls out quickly, but nothing going the governor's way. Third and eight from right around their own 27 yard line. 6.19 to go in the third quarter. It's a 35 nothing Saluki's lead. And a shotgun DeLillo. Drops back to the 19, pressure from the outside, tries to get out of the pocket, and he has nowhere to go. It was Zach Barola, the linebacker that got a hold of him, didn't let him go, and he brings him down along with Peyton Reeves. Zach Barola showing some excitement. He's an animated character on this defense, a little selly there, the old alley-oop. Zach Barola hasn't really made an impact tonight, but that one is big as it brings the punt team out. Got to love it for the Saluki defense there to shut down another awesome P drive. We've seen Branson Combs have his drives this game. Bo Haynick has had his moments. Now the third linebacker, Zach Barola, and you've also seen Dune Smith with a pick six. So Barola didn't want to be left out, and he's got a contribution there. It's now fourth and 14, and once again, Riley Stevens on the field. The redshirt junior has been busy here in tonight's game as Dayton Mitchell again back to return for the Salukis and they like their wide receiver depth because of players like Dayton Mitchell. They called him a smart wide receiver and a smart player and one that, that's good to have as your number five, number six guy and can also make an impact as a special teams guy as well. Yeah, if you're Dayton Mitchell, you're just appreciative of being on the field, right? Getting a glimpse at all the skill players they have finding out where's my role and how am I going to find my way on the field. And I think with the plethora of guys that they use, it's not that hard, Dane. You're going to find yourself on the field. So 82, getting coached up always. The coaches told us early in the week he's one of the most coachable kids they have on the team. And although he doesn't see much time, he's very vocal and a lot of the team respects him. They are taking another look at that most recent play, the sack with Brol and company. It looked like he might have got a little bit of the horse collar there. We'll wait and see what the end call is. but. Either way, the officials taking a look at it now. You can see the members of the Saluki Dog Pound enjoying everything they've seen here tonight. Again, a far cry from what happened at the start of last year on the road against Incarnate Ward. Then they came back home against SEMO, and that game came down to the wire. A heartbreaking defeat for this group, leaving nothing left on the table here tonight so far. Yeah, and that was something that veteran linebacker Branson Combs had said when he spoke to us earlier this week. He said, we're just trying to get that bad taste of, out of our mouths from last season when Incarnate Ward hung 55 on us. We want to come out, start the season off on the right foot, and I think they're doing just that, and they're going to be happy with a lot of the things that they put on tape. You can see Austin P still on the field, their special teams unit. Now this offense still negative in terms of rushing yards, negative 17 rushing yards on the game, 67 through the year, 50 total on the other side, 271 overall yards for a Saluki offense that's gotten the passing game going, it's gotten the rushing game going, and that's been mainly without Deontay Cox and Isaiah Hartrup really playing up to their potential. The top two wide receivers on the depth chart haven't had their biggest games yet, but they haven't needed to with everyone else contributing. And I think that has to do with the 21 pass attempts from Nick Baker, right? Not as much as you would think with a 35-0 lead, so that's playing into a little bit. But on the other side, Austin P. offensively, they're known for their RPOs. They're up-tempo, getting plays called within 10 seconds of the ladder, going to run 90-plus plays a game. That's their bread and butter, and, and that's what they do best, is getting on the ball, lining up, and exhausting defenses, the stick plays, the bubbles, all of these things that they're known for, they're just not really working tonight. And when your bread and butter's not going, nothing is going to get going eventually. Call made there, targeting against what looked to be Dune Smith, someone who's had an excellent game. Stone had the pick six in the first half, and they were looking to see if there was targeting there. and. Looks like they decided it was, so it's a 15-yard penalty against SIU as well, along with losing Dune Smith there. So a turn of events there, you think you get the sack, you force the punting unit on again, and said offense stays on the bench. And for Austin P, the offense stays on the field, a second chance for this team that has needed a second chance. The ball is placed inside their own 45-yard line, but new life 
for DeLille and company. First and 10. They line up in the shotgun. Javon Jackson is the running back. Goko goes in motion. They pump fake to him. A little bit of time. Now they fire it out to their tight end. Nowhere to go. He is tackled quickly by Iverson Brown, the safety from Belleville, Illinois. If you're DeLillo, that one's just got to go over Goko's head, right? You just don't want to take that unnecessary loss of five, six yards. He's a graduate senior. We know how many games he has under his belt. That's not a mistake you want to make, but it is a mistake you make. And bullets are flying, and you're down 35-0 late in the third quarter. Brown, someone who was at Illinois State from 2018 to 21, did not play last year in his first season at SIU, but here suited up tonight. They fired to the left side, incomplete, tight defense, and it looks like there's a flag. That was DJ Johnson defending Trey Goodman, maybe a little bit too aggressively there. It may be just a tad. It was great defense from DJ Johnson as he's showing some animation there. A lot of frustration. Good route from Trey Goodman to stem him up, break him off on the inside. If you're Mike DeLillo, you got to throw that ball when they're rubbing each other, hoping for that laundry, and he got it. Indeed, is pass interference against DJ Johnson. One interception here tonight. One of the teams, two to go along with the pick six that was caught by Dune Smith. But this drive that has been a long one so far continues to get longer, and it'll be an automatic first down for DeLillo and company. Again, trying to connect with Trey Goodman. Those two haven't had their usual success so far here tonight. Goodman, one grab for 15 yards. Had a couple passes in the first half that went just out of his reach could have been big plays that could have very well determined a different result in that first half. First and 10 across the 45 is this Austin P offense. That was Javon Jackson to the right side getting the carry. PJ Jules on the tackle. The Saluki defense is so good at making tackles in space. When you look at them first glance, they're not all that big, right? The size isn't there, but that's kind of the point. They're quick. They're twitchy. P.J. Jules is aggressive, so they do pack a punch. Second and seven, play action. DeLille takes a deep shot down the far side of the field, looking for what looks to be Goodman, and it's just out of his reach again. Goodman dove for it against D.J. Johnson, but it was out of his reach. Falls incomplete. It'll be third and seven. Although this game's not all that exciting, the battle between Trey Goodman and DJ Johnson is. They're going at it. Mike DeLillo just trying to give Trey Goodman a chance here. Falls a little inside. Not what you're looking for if you're Trey Goodman, having to lean all the way. It's not something you anticipate there, so Mike DeLillo's got to keep that one to the outside, obviously. Goodman at the top of your screen. Third down and seven balls right at the 50-yard line. Austin P still scoreless with 4.21 left to go in the third quarter. They decide to hand it off. Javon Jackson, big hole down the right side. It's a first down across the 40-yard line. A gamble on third down to go with the run, but it paid off. So Jackson moves the chains. First and 10 now in Saluki territory. The ball placed right across that 40-yard line. This will be a pass to Lillo to the right side, and he's got his man good dart to the outside by the veteran quarterback as he was able to connect on the outside with Trey Shackleford. The first time we have mentioned him so far here tonight, Stone, the redshirt sophomore from Alabama. Eight catches for 76 yards a year ago, one of the top receivers on their depth chart. Hasn't been able to make an impact until now. Handoff Jackson, another big hole for Javon Jackson. He has had a lot more running room on this possession than he has all night long. Talked about it at the beginning of this drive, Dominic, the tempo, right? Running plays 10 seconds apart from each other, and this is what they do best. This is when this offense is going. Full go here, first down pass, and there is nowhere to go for Shackleford on that play as it falls incomplete. Combs and company out there to force the incompletion. It'll be second and 10. Welcome back, Mark Davis Jr. Crossing the arms, letting the crowd know, yeah, yeah, that's me. Sniffed that one out. Didn't let anybody get in his way there. And that's a drive stall. That's something if you're Mike DeLillo, now you have to think about, right? You've been running and gunning and getting these balls out, but when someone sticks your receiver like that, next time you're gonna wait an extra second. Shackle four lined up against Mark Davis again on the bottom of your screen. Second down and 10. Play action, firing across to the left side was DeLuo, and he's able to connect on the far end with Cam Thomas. 
They found a lot of success with those inside slants. Just a simple three-step drop in rhythm for Mike DeLillo, hitting Cam Thomas there. Wish we would have seen this earlier. This offense is clicking on all cylinders right now. Running room becomes a very clustered area. No thing there that time for Javon Jackson as looked to be Bohannick and company in there to make the stop. No gain on first down. It'll be second and 10, keeping the tempo high as they get right back to the line of scrimmage for second down. Rare appearance in the red zone for Austin P. Goko, the tight end, grabs it on the slant across the middle. Got it across the 15. It'll be third down. Not necessarily sure what the goal is there with a slip screen with your 6'6", 250-pound tight end, Jordan Goko. Didn't know if any linemen were supposed to climb to the next level, maybe create an alley for him, but simple slant to him right there is not going to get it done, especially on second and long. Just a three-yard gain for the Austin P. tight end. Third down and seven from inside the 15. Lining up in the shotgun again is the little Drops back. Fires it across his body, and that's incomplete. But flags come down late. P.J. Jules was there in coverage. He's frustrated by it, so is Combs. And it looks to be going against the veteran safety for SIU. You talked about P.J. Jules' aggression. Yeah, he has that, and that's pretty evident. But that's what makes him so good. If you were Antonio James, you got to live with plays like that because you know that's what you get when you sign up for P.J. Jules, somebody who's over-aggressive, somebody who's a game-changer at times, but of course, you're going to get a little over-aggressive, some pass interference here and there. James described him as someone who's always willing to learn and always willing to be vocal in meetings and taking that next step as a leader and has really emerged as one of the top defensive players, not just on this Luka team, but in the MVFC. So it's fourth down. Doesn't look like they're going to get Jules for anything. So it'll be a finally a scoring opportunity for this offense. Maddox Trujillo on the junior for the first time here tonight for what looks to be right around a 29-yard attempt. Snap was a good one. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Austin P is on the board. The junior kicker Maddox Trujillo is able to take that zero off the scoreboard and make it a 35 to three ball game with a minute 45 left to go here in the third quarter. So if you're Austin P, obviously not the exact result you want, but they're at least able to get something on the score sheet as we now take a look at some of the Saluki defensive backs in the NFL and Jeremy Chin, of course, the big highlight one playing in Carolina. And it is Jeremy Chin bobblehead night as well. So he's being recognized here tonight, but a lot of good players for this team. Yeah, let's take a look at Craig James down there on the bottom for the New York Jets. Got put onto the practice squad back to the active lineup in week one. So that's good news. The Jets, a very highly touted and popular team, obviously, in the NFL right now. And then Jeremy Chin, it says safety, but he did so much for the Salukis. There were so many positions that he plays, and there were so many things that coaches asked of him. And he's doing the same thing for the Carolina Panthers. He's a switchblade. Whatever they need him to do, whether it's roam, cover some of the inside guys, fill some gaps, and run the alley, Jeremy Chin can do it all, and he's, of course, going to reap the benefits from it. I'm sure he's one of the guys on the Panthers that needs to be paid and will get paid. So after the 29-yard field goal was good from Trujillo, Austin Peay is on the board now, trailing 35 to 3, under two minutes left to go here in the third quarter as it's kicked off to Vincent Davis in his own end zone. And he'll call the fair catch there. So here comes Nick Baker in the Saluki offense. A lot's going right for this team, and they Got a little bit of time to rest. That hasn't been a common thing here tonight. It's been a lot of quick drives forced by this Saluki defense, forcing punts early on, but now Baker and company got a chance to kind of settle down a little bit and head back on the field. Yeah, you're still allowed to play with that nothing to lose mentality, right? You understand what the score is. You're up by an entire 32 points. So that playbook is still open. Now this is where it starts to creep in offensive coordinator Blake Rowland's mind or coach Nick Hill's mind, your next week opponent, right? Do we show all of our cards? We have this game in the back, so now you're battling with that mentally. Becomes tricky, but at the same time, got 11 guys out there, and you want to find the end zone, and they're going to try to do so. You can see Nick Hill there watching on. First down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Justin Strong is the running back. Big hole right side. There goes Strong. First down carry, and got close to that 39-yard marker as well. So a good game there on first down by Justin Strong to move the chains. That was 
the 10th carry of the game for Strong. They move quickly left side. Isaiah Hartra, powerful movement as he still is going across the 45 yard line. How about that by Isaiah Hartra? Yeah, that's big boy stuff from number five there. That's the benefits of an up-tempo offense, right? You get to the line of scrimmage, rush, rush, rush. You give the offensive lineman the call, the set. Now they know what's going on, and you can squirt that ball out to one of your playmakers before the secondary is even a set, before they're even lined, before they even understand what's going on, and boof, 20-yard gain just like that. Watch that play again. They got it out to Isaiah Hardrup, and he did the rest. There's Vincent Davis, the young guy getting it done for his compatriot, Isaiah Hartrip there. You see three receivers out there. Again, this is one of those scenarios where you're just not sure who's out there, right? Is it five, is it three, is he a running back, is he a wide out and poof, he goes for 20. It's something that I think is underrated, especially for defenders having to try to understand who's got the ball and are they trying to get him. It's just very confusing and I think that, again, that's the benefits. You're looking at two members of the secondary out there, three receivers, you have your numbers, you understand that if you're Nick Baker, you just got to get that ball out there and let Isaiah Hartrip do the rest. One of those wide receivers, Zach Gibson, will apply the block down the field. Someone this team is really high on, had a really good preseason in camp and hasn't had too much action here tonight so far, but expecting to see an increased role as the season goes on. The injured player for Austin P was their defensive end, Kendall Ball, the redshirt freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. Good sign for them as he was able to get up on his feet and get off the field under his own power. But with Hartrup and the amount of weapons this team has, Nick Baker was kind of talking about this earlier on in the week and how there's he feels a little bit less pressure on him because there's so many talented options out there. He just needs to get the ball out of his hands and get it to these playmakers and they'll take care of him. Yeah, it allows you to go into games confident and, and feel as if there's no pressure like you had mentioned. And he shows it. He plays free. All the improv stuff comes right off the dome for Nick. It's nothing that he plans. Strong. Look at all the running room, but he lost his footing across the 40-yard line. Could have been a much bigger gain. The pressure being applied on the outside for Austin P, but maybe a bit of a break there as there was plenty of room for Justin Strong, who has looked explosive here this drive. Yeah, running back room going to enjoy that one come film session tomorrow. Just a nice little face plant one. That one's going to go slow-mo for the entire team to see. Well, Sean Lester is their running back now, his first appearance of the night. Look at him go. What a way to make an introduction to these Saluki fans. Right up the gut and gets a first down. And nothing really this Austin P defense can do. SIU is just going a little too fast right now. And again, throwing another running back into the mix. If you're a DC at this point, you don't know who is who and why they're in the game. But there goes Lester. Got some play last year. They love Lester. It's a guy socially that they bought into, and he's bought into them. And I think he's going to be an impact player for these guys for years to come. Baker drops back to the 40. He's looking deep for Hartrup. He's got him, and he connects with him for the touchdown. What a throw by Baker, and it's Hartrup in the end zone for six. We do have laundry on the field, but I think it might have been some unnecessary roughness. Number eight, Nick Baker taking a lick there, delivering a dime. We love to see it. The crowd loves to see it. Everyone kind of waiting, though, before we celebrate. What's that flag? Single receiver to the boundary. You get a Dan Marino drop. Yeah, Nick Baker takes a lick there, puts it right in the bucket. If there was a trash can there, and this is a Tuesday at 2 p.m., that lands right inside. That's an awesome throw. That's an awesome catch. It's an awesome play all around, especially for Nick Baker just standing in the pocket and absorbing the blow. And how good does that feel for Isaiah Hartrip, someone who could only play one game a season ago, now here, back healthy again, and he looks healthy as well with the big play there. Isaiah Hartrip licking his chops just as much as Nick Baker did. Whenever you're solo to the boundary and you've got man coverage, as a quarterback, you know you're letting that ball fly. There's no hesitation there. And if you're Isaiah Hartrip and you realize, I'm by myself, he's on an island trying to cover me. If I can get outside of him, stack on top of him, and get a good ball from Nick, I'm going to score here. And that's exactly what happened. 41 to 3 is the Saluki lead. Nick Baker, 219 yards, 16 of 23 through the year. Also has three touchdowns on the ground. He's gotten it done too with 16 yards, averaging right around three yards per carry. As the officials will be taking a look at something here as well. But 
the deep group of weapons for the Slogies paying off. But for Austin P now, you're down to the final 15 minutes of this game in a game that hasn't seen much go right for them. A season opener that might leave a sour taste in their mouth as you get a chance to watch that play again. Pressure was coming, didn't matter for Baker. Yeah, but it's not going to help next week, traveling to Neyland Stadium to take on the Tennessee Volunteers. I think the thing that you have to understand here is all of the mistakes that they put on tape. If you're a Tennessee Volunteer coach, you're circling it. You're starring that play. Hey, they didn't know how to handle this. When they sent this guy in motion, there was a lapse here, and we understand that this gap can open up. There's so many things that Tennessee's going to learn about Austin P that I think is not going to make it easier next week for them. You mentioned their road trip to Tennessee. Four of their first five games are on the road. Their only home game during that stretch, Saturday, September 16th, against ETSU. Then they go on the road to Stephen F. Austin and then Lindywood before finally returning home again October 14th. So a busy road trip for this group, and it all starts here in Carbondale, Illinois, coming from Clarksville, Tennessee. Five plays that drive, 75 yards, took less than two minutes for Nick Baker to connect with Hardship for the first time this season for six. Bumgard on for yet another extra point. He hasn't missed an extra point yet. Had a 39 yard round temp earlier on in the game. That one couldn't go through, but as you can see the scoreboard, 41-3. Something he just wants to work on going forward as he was someone that talked about it in an interview with Luke Martin, saying he wants to find consistency at that kicker position. Last year, just had a lot of ups and downs and had some good games and had some ones where he just left some meat on the bone. And now an opportunity for him as, once again, coming in as a starting kicker for this team and wants to find that consistency, however. Yeah, if you're not a vocal guy, it's sometimes hard to find your way through a locker room if you're a kicker. I think Bumgarner's done a great job here. I also think something to point out here, Nick Baker has always held for his field goal kickers. It's something that I think he takes pride in. Coach says, dude, we need to keep you off of the field. We don't want you getting hurt. S simply right there, there are guys right near him, but he doesn't care. He loves being out there and celebrating with the rest of the offensive line and, and just being that leader of the team. That kick is up and good, and that'll end the opening three quarters of play. 42 to three, Saluki's lead. Isaiah Hartrup finds the end zone for the first time in 2023. Fifteen minutes to go here from Saluki Stadium, 42 to three, SIU Lee. As we enter the fourth and final quarter of play, you can take a look at the Saluki bench and now Thomas Burks, who gets set to kick things off. Tom Nicosher, along with Stone Levano, was thanking you for joining us here on ESPN Plus tonight. It's been all SIU. Can they wrap it up here quickly in this? fourth and final quarter of play as it goes out of bounds. Touchback there from Thomas Burks. And on comes this Austin P offense that looks to find the end zone for the first time here tonight. They did have a field goal earlier on in this in that third quarter, but haven't been able to find Pater yet. And at this point for the offense, you just got to keep everybody upright. You want nobody getting injured, and you just want to finish this game out in a clean manner. All of these players get graded when they show up to the facility tomorrow, and they need that to be clean, and they need these plays on tape to be something to look forward to for next week. Hey, guys, we played like this in the fourth. If we played like we did in the fourth next week, we'll have a shot. So that's what we're looking for here. Again, next week they travel to Tennessee. A game that can be seen on ESPN Plus and the SEC Network. Big test on the way for this Austin Peak group. First down and 10 from their own 25. They line up in the shotgun. A little under pressure again. Nowhere to go. He is sacked in the backfield as a flag is thrown as well when the contact was made. Tough for DeLillo. Right, not only did he actually get sacked, but there was a coverage sack on the back end as well. Really nowhere to go with the football. Just waiting for that pocket to collapse. Last person to come out of that herd of Salukis was Zach Barola, the senior from Las Vegas, Nevada. As you can see, the officials now huddled up making the call. And it will be against the Austin P offense as they look over to Hill and company to determine what they want to do with the call. This SIU team giving their defense some of their key players a chance to rest. Branson Combs currently out of the game and get an opportunity to just recover a little bit after a busy game so far. It's just a 
somebody grabbed a face mask down there on the way to the sack here, so. Like he said, the face mask call early on in this drive, so it will be second down now and long for DeLille. He's lined up in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right and two receivers to the left now as with 14.50 left to go in the fourth quarter. It's a handoff right side. Big hole again. There's been a lot of running room here in this second half so far for Javon Jackson. Nowhere really to go in that first half stone, but the holes have opened up the offensive line. Starting to have better performances at that line of scrimmage. Yeah, he gives, him, gives his team a third and manageable. I think that's what's most important here. Time for Mike DeLillo to convert. Third down, he drops back to the 19-yard line. All the way across, that's incomplete tight coverage on the near side by DJ Johnson. I think the later this game goes, the more Mike DeLillo's mechanics fall to the wayside here. So he takes a three-step drop, but not only did he hitch, he hitched twice, he patted the ball, he let DJ Johnson know that he was throwing the ball, and that's just textbook what not to do. So I think as this game goes on, and they find themselves down 42 to three, it's things like that. Mike DeLillo, you can't get lazy in a spot like that, because that was almost another pick six for the Salukis. Riley Stevens, the redshirt junior on again to boot it away. No pressure coming. Dayton Mitchell back to return. Doesn't call a fair catch. Instead makes one man miss, but then it's brought down an aggressive play. That time on special teams for Austin P. It looked to be Austin Skolin, the junior linebacker from Austin, Texas, and Tyler Junior College making a stop there on special teams. 42 to three is the Saluki lead here on ESPN+. Plus. Big Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Coach Reed, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It helps you create an affordable price just for you. Oh, Coach, it happened again. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Imagine. Imagine new beginnings. Imagine discovering new ways to feed the world and imagine telling stories that need to be heard. Imagine fighting for social justice and imagine traditions that bring us together. Imagine unique environments and imagine going from the classroom to the boardroom. Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Imagine the possibilities. Dear Sharp Curves, don't spin your wheels. Toyota has more all-wheel drive sedans than any other brand. So you can bet your bottom dollar that we're sharper than ever. Because we got traction, baby. Yours, Toyota Sedans. Right now, get 3.99% APR for 48 months on a new Toyota Corolla, BZ4X, RAV4, Highlander, or Tacoma. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. The valley runs deep. We have all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper. Nick Hill has to be pleased with the performance of his group here tonight. They lead 42 to three, entering the final 14 minutes of play. A switch at quarterback Hunter Simmons into the game and Dayton Mitchell, who we've said all night long as a kick returner and punt returner, now getting the opportunity as a wide receiver too. So a chance now for some of the second string, third string guys to come in and try to get an impact and try to show the coaches what they can provide in an actual game film. Second down now and short after a good play to Mitchell on first down. It was a gain of eight to their wide receiver from the sophomore from Watt City, Missouri. Simmons wearing the number 18. 
Six foot three sophomore. Handoff now. LaShawn Lester. Good patience to get the first down and get close to that 50 yard marker. Michael Rutland Jr., one of the players there to help make the tackle, the free safety for the Governors, someone who was at Princeton from 2019 to 2022. First team all IEV a year ago. Has an all-star group of cousins, Carlton Davis the third, who plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl champion, and also cousins with Robert Massey, played for the Saints, was drafted in the second round in the NFL draft back in early 1980s. Simmons looking to lead this Loki offense to get another score. Lester, nowhere to go that time. A group of governors were there to make the tackle. So it'll be second down. Yeah, got some extracurricular activity there from the lineman, I believe, Chase Evans. But you go back and look at that play. Hunter Simmons, a lot of RPO plays are called, especially late in games, giving young guys chances to pop a bubble out there. Just let one of your receivers do something in space. And I think Hunter Simmons missed an opportunity there to squeeze one out there, put it in one of your skilled players' hands and let him do the rest. But of course, it's late in the game. Nobody's going to be mad you're handing the ball off here with a 42-3 to lead. So a penalty against the Salukis, unnecessary roughness called against SIU. So they'll go backwards there. Good play on the defensive side by the freshman Jaden McKinney, defensive lineman at six foot three, two hundred and seventy-three pounds from Tennessee. A chance now for Austin P players as well. Some guys who haven't gotten too much game time yet so far, maybe in the first half and third quarter. Now a chance to show what they can put on tape to go along with the Slugies. It's second down and twenty-three for Simmons. It's a handoff. Right side, nowhere to go. Once again, aggressive defense by Austin P. Mike Evans, the defensive back from St. Petersburg, Florida, on the stop. Yeah, just hope, hoping something pops there, right? It's second and forever trying to put it within third and 15 and something actually manageable and something you actually have plays for that distance specifically, but third and forever here. Curious to what we're looking at here. Maybe a screen, maybe he takes the top off. I mean, really, you can do what you want here in a spot like this, especially with all of the young guys on both sides of the ball. That was the first touch of the game for Jalen Reed, a transfer from Western Illinois, a junior from East St. Louis, Illinois as well. Bit of a low snap for Simmons. Goes across the right side, and that should have been picked off. He threw it directly at Cade Stevenson, the safety from Oklahoma, but it was dropped incomplete. And only for the second time here tonight, Nathan Torney set to take the field. I can guarantee you this, Dominic. When this Austin P team shows up to the facility in that very first team meeting, Coach Scotty Walden is going to have, whether it's on the big board, whether it's in position meetings, every single play that was a missed opportunity. You're going to have the Mike DeLillo earlier in the game, some of those overthrows. You're going to have dropped interceptions here and there. You're going to have missed assignments. There are going to be so many plays that coach can point to and say, this is why the result was what it was. Too many missed opportunities, and here's a list, and they're going to be shown every single one of them. That punt goes to the 35-yard line for Torney, so we'll take it to another break. 42-3 to is the SIU lead here in the fourth and final quarter. DeLillo and company still in the ball game for Austin P trailing 42 to three and the season opener of 2023 in Carbondale, Illinois. Bit of a warm night here in Carbondale, but fans still in attendance despite the score line and despite that end of summer heat. Play action, DeLillo looks down the middle of the field, bit of a low pass, but it was placed perfectly for the grab on first down. That was the wide receiver, MJ Singleton, the junior at five foot nine. Good route ran and a good play on first down. 
instead called incomplete. So again, you think this team's got a good opportunity. The ball is placed in the right spot, but Singleton unable to corral it. And it wasn't the easiest catch to make, but at the same time, a missed opportunity for this offense. Yeah, nonetheless, it was a good play by the tandem, a simple RPO where you want to see that safety come down a little bit, act as if he's going to run the alley and play the run and slip that slant right behind him. It was well executed, just a little low for Singleton there, incomplete pass. So I'll make it second and 10 to Lil now on the game. Just 82 yards, 11 of 24 through the air. Also has two interceptions, one of them off the fingertips and another straight to DJ Johnson. This time it goes to the right side. Singleton, another opportunity. Initial contact wasn't enough to bring him down. A powerful move there by Singleton. He got close to the first down marker, a couple yards short. Again, it's just odd that we're seeing success with some of that up-tempo offense that they're known for, Austin P. This late in the game, you got off-leverage corner. That safety's sitting at about 8 to 10 yards, too deep, giving you no respect, and you're just squirting that thing out there. And we're seeing it again. You get the look you want, you make it happen. That's not a call there, Dominic. That's Mike DeLillo making that decision. Hey, I have what I want. This is the coverage that this play is designed for. I'm going to let my skill player do the most with it here. It's just taken them so long, almost three quarters, to figure out that this is what they need to be doing. They've done it now with 11 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. DeLillo, pump fakes, now fires it down the near side. Flag is thrown as the pass falls incomplete. It was Drake Johnson applying a lot of contact there and draws the penalty flag. Yeah, Drake Johnson thought he was going to get away with one there. Had the hand on the hip, and you got the jersey tug to go with it. Mike DeLello, smart on his part, just trying to give his receiver a chance there, knowing I have man coverage. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what he can do. Is indeed against Drake Johnson, the junior from Missouri City, Texas, in his first year with this program as well. Was at Texas State from 2021 to 2022. Played seven games during that two-year span. Started his career at Mary Hart in Baylor. Played nine games in two seasons from 2019-20. DeLillo stands in the shotgun. First and 10 now from the 41-yard line. Drops back to the 50. No pressure, so he has time to go across the middle, and he's got his man. That's Thomas, and he breaks free. That's the first touchdown of the season for Austin P. Great throw by DeLillo, and Cam Thomas showing off his explosiveness there. Where was this earlier, Dominic? This is textbook stuff. It's a mature drop back pass, full progression read for Mike DeLillo. He's going to take a drop. He's going to start right, work his way, knowing where Cam Thomas is going to be. Beautiful footwork sitting right atop of that platform. Hits Cam Thomas and Stride. He does the rest. That's easy money for Austin P. And we're just now seeing it come to fruition. Big connection there from Dulillo to Thomas. A 36-yard touchdown pass. The first of the season for Austin P. And Dulillo now over that century mark, 132 yards on the game and now one touchdown. Trujillo on for the extra point, and that is up, and that is no good. So Trujillo misses it, and it remains 42 to nine with 10.40 left to go. It was a touchdown pass from Duhillo to Thomas for the first time here in 2023. Delillo to Cam Thomas for the first touchdown of the season for Austin P to make it a 42 to nine ball game here in the season opener at Saluki Stadium. Dominic Osher and former Saluki quarterback Stone Cabanowitz here on ESPN Plus. Thanking you for joining us from wherever you may be. Positive stepping stones for this Austin P team now on the offensive end. Seeing that connection from Cam Thomas to, or from DeHillo to Cam Thomas and the explosiveness of their Star on special teams coming out there on the offensive side of all that time around. So here comes the Saluki offense. 10.40 left to go in the fourth quarter. Everything decided.
at the final score here at Saluki Stadium, but a much better bounce back this year at the start of the season. And again, this is a team that has had kind of a different approach coming into the year. Like we mentioned earlier, we talked with Branson Combs earlier on in the week, and he talked about the different mindset this group has on a weekly basis and how they're trying to form better consistency. What he meant by that was consistency in how you view your opponents, not overlooking anyone, because last year they knew they could beat anybody. They had a, an incredible road win at Northwestern. But then they had losses at the end of the year, mostly by one scores, and that showed that they could also be beaten by anyone. And so they've had to make that adjustment over the course of the offseason. What went into that for Combs and company was just getting closer as a team, building that chemistry off the field as a flag is thrown there, but just becoming closer as a group of men. And in doing so, they feel better coming into this season, and the results so far are showing against a talented Austin P team coming off a great season like a year ago. Yeah, I think that's well said. I think with all things considered, this is a mission accomplished for Southern Illinois. They came out and executed in every facet of the game. Special teams was fine. You had defensive players coming up big when you didn't expect them to, so you're checking that box. I think offensively, everything you drew up, and especially the opening 15, 16 plays of the game that you script in the middle of the week, those work. So I could go down this list of everything that Southern Illinois has done correctly, and I think they're going to talk about it heading into next week. Our execution level was high. We have to keep this up. The next time the Salukis take the field will be next Saturday, September 9th at 2.30 p.m. at Northern Illinois, that game on ESPN+. Plus. Road trip continues with that game against SEMO on September 16th. Next time the Salukis will be playing here in Carbondale will be against Missouri State after the bye week on September 30th. That game at 4 p.m. and again on ESPN+. Plus. Hunter Simmons is still the quarterback. He goes across the middle of the field and he connects with Dayton and Mitchell. Those two are showing a strong connection so far. Yeah, it was funny when Dayton Mitchell returned the one punt that he probably shouldn't have maybe five minutes ago. He got the sense maybe he's gearing up, right? He knows he's going to take the field. It's a little cold. He hasn't been able to return one, not even for a yard, all fair catches. So Dave Mitchell, a guy we talked about earlier, coaches love him and understand that he's bought into the system. And I think you're seeing late in this game with 9.28 to go that, hey, we can get him involved and he's not going to let us down. He understands the playbook and he knows what we're asking him to do. And he's executing properly. It's awesome stuff from number 82. It was a gain of 11 on second down to make it third and four. Simmons drops back to the 23, and he was not on the same wavelength that time as Mitchell. Went well over his head and out of bounds. Was incomplete to force fourth and four. Yeah, sometimes offenses have these wheel route options implemented. Typically, you would try to execute it more on a play action, a rollout scenario where you can get that corner on his heels and in the midst of a back pedal and that receiver puts his foot in the turf, stops on a dime and you hit him. There I think a simple miscommunication with quarterback Hunter Simmons. Nathan Torney on for the third time here tonight. He's standing at his own 16 and 17 yard line. Austin P belly momentum on both sides of the ball as a fair catch is called for right around that 36 yard line. But defensively shoring up and offensively scoring as well. But they still trail 42 to nine under nine minutes to go here in the fourth and final quarter at Saluki Stadium. Your score, 858 remaining here in the fourth quarter. SIU on the verge of improving to 1-0 through their season opener here at home. Austin P falling 2-0 and 1. A little play action fires at the left side, and a good tackle is made there to start off the drive on the defensive end for Southern Illinois. That was Dre Newman, the junior cornerback, 5'11 from Alabama, wrapping him up there after a gain of eight. So good play on first down for DeLillo. Second down drops back to the 35 across the middle, incomplete. He was looking for his wide receiver, Kenny Odom, but could not connect. As we approach this third and two, and we were looking at some of the things we've went over over the course of the week and Deontay Cox and Nick Baker both came in for an interview. At first it was just Deontay Cox, but then we heard a knock on the door and then it was Nick Baker and it was perfect because 
those two, I mean, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. They've known each other since 2015, and that connection has only grown over time. And when talking to them, Deontay said that connection really took that leap in 2016. That was the first year Nick Baker was a starter at the high school, and those two built that connection then. And it didn't start at Southern Illinois at the collegiate level. Deontay Cox had time over at Illinois and others, but now he eventually ended up at SIU, and it's been a rocky road. He even admitted that. It hasn't been the smoothest path for him at Stone in 2020 and 2021. Only a one game appearance, suffered injuries, both knees, and when talking to them, Deontay, after that second knee injury, wasn't even sure if he still wanted to play football. Wasn't sure if he still wanted to suit up as there's a flag thrown, and this pass is, looks like to be picked off. I was to wait and see what that flag is for, but a risky throw gets caught by the opposing team, and it's been an impactful drive on the defensive end for Dre Newman. We have to wait and see what that penalty flag is on. But more on that for Cox. Unsure if he wanted that career to continue after that second knee injury, but Nick Baker talking to him and telling him, just give it time, give it time to think about it. Right now in the heat of the moment after the injury, of course the stress is gonna be there and the doubt's gonna be there too, but who knows how you're gonna feel in nine months, even three months and down the road. And Deontay mentioned how watching his brother Avante, who this is his first season not playing with him here at SIU, watching Nick, and seeing them all do their thing as that penalty goes against SAU, so take the interception off the board. But seeing those two fueled him, motivated him to make that comeback, and it wasn't an easy one, but last year able to come back healthy, just a great sign for him. And he felt last year, he put up good numbers across the board, but he felt like they could have been even better. And this season, he really sees the opportunity to take a leap. They haven't needed him too much tonight. Three catches, 31 yards, but as the season goes on, you know he's gonna be a valuable member of this wide receiver core, and that connection with Nick Baker is going to be a big reason why this team would have success on the offensive end. Yeah, those two are tied to the hip. When you look at number eight, Nick Baker, number two, Deontay Cox, you mentioned 2016, right? They've been together for the long haul, and now it's paying off for them. And Avante Cox was, I think at times, one of the best players in an SIU uniform when he was here. And for Deontay Cox to now almost hold that trophy, it just speaks to, I think, the Rochester Rocket fraternity that Southern Illinois has been able to develop here, and those relationships grow. Even Zach Grant right now, the current wide receiver coach for Southern Illinois, was a part of that Rochester coaching staff. Like, they keep it within the family. I think comfortability is a big thing when it comes to attending SIU, and as what it pertains to offense is a lot of numbers. Avante Cox produced thousands of yards for Southern Illinois. And Deontay Cox is going to do the same, as well as Nick Baker, thousands upon thousands of yards. So I think this Rochester fraternity is only going to grow. It's an awesome program, head by Derek Leonard. So I look for that to continue. But yeah, Nick and Deontay are tied to the hip, like I had mentioned, and I think we're gonna see it all season long. Kenny Odom for nine yards on first down. Now a carry up the middle and the powerful running. That time for Austin P. a first down and a whole lot more. It'll be a first and goal opportunity for this Austin P. offense. It was C.J. Evans who has shown some bright spots here tonight. Came into this game, listed as their number two running back along with Javon Jackson, but he has had his moments to shine. Another chance here. Cuts his way to the right side. He goes across the goal line and is in for the touchdown. C.J. Evans, the senior from Alabama, scores for the first time here in 2023 and makes it a 42 to now 15 ball game. Yeah, C.J. Evans putting his right foot in the turf and getting downhill pretty quickly. Nobody wanted to step in front of that. Number five, making things happen. Yeah, that right foot just planting and getting right downhill. That's a quick, nice, easy six for Mr. C.J. Evans, Jr. Six-yard touchdown run for Evans. Bright spot for this team here in this fourth quarter is how their offense has been playing in defense, too, as that extra point is up, and it is good. With 6.39 left to go here in the fourth quarter, we'll take a chance now to mention the Hurricane Idalia. Help people affected by the hurricane and donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover. Again, that is redcross.org slash ESPN. 
are nearing the finish line here in the fourth quarter in Carbondale. And then we were talking about it earlier for this Austin P team. The game was decided coming into the fourth quarter, but it's what about you're going to put on tape now, what you're going to do going forward. Again, a tough road test, to say it lightly, against Tennessee and next week in the SEC. And you look at this team, and the first three quarters, not a lot went right for this group. But it's about how you respond in the fourth quarter and putting something positive on the field. And they've done that on both sides of the ball. And I think that's the answer for everybody at home who's upset that Mike DeLillo is still in the ball game, which you're allowed to be, right? He took a few dings even in that scoring drive, but it's not necessarily about that. You're willing to take that risk if Mike can feel like they're doing something right, like they're actually finding success running that the plays that they drew up and they've worked on all summer and all fall. So you just want to see him have success. You want him to feel it. You want him to be able to see it on tape come tomorrow and next week. So that's really what's going on right here for those wondering why Mike Galello is still in the ball game. Onside kick was easily recovered by SIU. It looked to be Cal Whiteman, the wide receiver and junior from Omaha, Nebraska, that was able to come up with it on the special teams unit. So 42-16, Southern Illinois lead, 6.39 left to go. Again, this is only the eighth meeting all time between these two programs, the first one in 31 years. And Austin P has struggled here in the state of Illinois. They're looking for, they were looking for their first one in the state since 2008 when they beat Eastern Illinois 15 to 13. All time, Austin P 10 and 23 against teams from Illinois and four and 12 to be 4-13 and 13 in games played in Illinois. As his first down and 10 in Austin P territory for Hunter Simmons and company. Handoff up the middle. LaShawn Lester has got plenty of work here in this second half, trying to show off what kind of depth this Saluki offense has. And we've already seen it. I mean, there's been three running backs that have almost served as wide receivers. Bennett Field with the receiving touchdown. Justin Strong has two scores, one of them being receiving. Then Roe Elliott, only eight carries here tonight, 39 yards, but he has a touchdown as well. So a deep running back room. And that was something that their coaching staff was excited about coming into the season. And it's only been evident here tonight. Yeah, because early in the week, speaking with Coach Nick Hill, talking about Romeo Elliott, hey, how many carries are you trying to give him on Saturday? And he spit out the number 15, which is standard for Romeo Elliott. There's an obligation you have to give him carries, but obviously with this lopsided score line, only been able to give him eight. Justin Strong, he's one of their hot hand guys. Ten carries, because he got going, you're going to keep him in the ball game also with a receiving touchdown and a chunkster with a 13-yarder. So we talked about the depth. There are plethora of guys, and now another one coming into the mix. There's just so much depth on this team, and I think it speaks to the recruiting ability that Nick Hill has, just bringing in talent after talent after talented. They come from South Florida. They come from all over the place, and I think that's one thing that the Salukis hang their hat on. And we look on the other side, right, Austin P. They're so good at grabbing transfers as well. There's so many of these guys when we're breaking down and, and taking our notes that he played 10 games over here the year before, and now he's here. He played six games last year. He's very important to this team. He wasn't even here last year. So I think, again, it speaks to my earlier mentioning of the transfer portal and how it's actually beneficial, and a lot of these teams reap the benefits from it. Simmons deep shot intended for Gibson. That falls incomplete. It'll be fourth and five, but you're mentioning this Austin B transfer group and they had 20 transfers this season, eight of them coming from FCS programs, 45 total newcomers, 25 of those being freshmen, then the other 20, like we mentioned, being transfers. In terms of returners, they had nine returning starters on the offensive side, only three on defense. So it's a new look defense. You assume it would take some time for this group really to gel and start building that chemistry and they're right in the fire here tonight on a tough road trip and it hasn't been easy last two games for this Austin P group. Their last game of 2022 against Alabama, v Alabama, and then now playing SIU and seeing how this game has gone, and then Tennessee next week. Fourth and five, they're going for it. Simmons has time, now has to roll to the right. Eyes down the field. Pump fakes, cuts. He's got the first down and a little bit more as well. How about that athleticism from Hunter Simmons making a man miss and moving the chains. Yeah, he looked confident doing so. He knew that he needed five yards and he was going to put his head down, tuck that ball high and tight, and end up moving those chains there. Look fearless out there. Putting that move right around Connor Murphy, the senior linebacker for Austin Peay. So it'll be first and 10 as the 
backup offense for the Salukis continues to put some positive things on film as Simmons lines up in the pistol. Hey, John, the you mentioned right there are nine returners on this Austin P offense. I, I know it's harsh, but I think you're allowed to put some of the blame on that offense, right? Defensively, some of the new guys you're supposed to lean on Mike DeLillo, the graduate senior, and the plethora of guys that they're bringing back. But 39 total rushing yards, and DeLillo with 150 yards through the air. When you have nine returners and you talk about week one, that's when you're supposed to light it up. And with 39 total yards rushing again and 150 yards of the air and only one touchdown pass, it's not what you were looking for. Again, I think a lot of the blame can go on this offense because expectations were very high. Through the first half, like we mentioned earlier, they had negative rushing yards, couldn't get anything going on the ground, putting all the pressure on the passing game, and DeLillo wasn't able to get the job done. But again, they've been able to show those improvements in the fourth quarter. Can they turn that into success going forward? But the slow start has cost his team. Zach Gibson, he makes the grab, got it near that 15-yard line, and the Austin P player is slow to get up after that play came to an end. That is Jose Knifley Jr., the impressive linebacker. We said his name a lot in the first half, Stone, but not too much here in the second half. But he's back up on his feet right now, leaned over, and looks like he's able to stay in the game. And actually, he's the guy that I've starred from this Austin P roster. I'm going to keep an eye on him throughout the season. He's got a lot of talent. He flies around. And again, there are two or three of them on the defensive side that are leaders of this team. You can tell the energy. They're vocal. You can see how the team reacts when they make plays on the sideline. And I think those are the things that are niche, but you're allowed to pay attention to because they mean a lot, right? Knifley means a lot to this team. We had a chance to get to know him a little better when talking to some of the staff, and they said that his effort level, his motor, he's just one of those guys who just can't turn it off, and I think that's what we like about him because we're seeing it tonight. We've seen it all night. Although they're down 42-16 and staring 0-1 down the barrel, 10's putting good stuff on tape. I think a lot of the guys defensively for Austin P have. Javon McIver, we've talked about him. Corey Chapman, we've rattled off his name at least 20 times. He's just a playmaker. So Austin P has the guys to do it defensively. We talked about a lot of them being newcomers, and I think you need a week under your belt. And SIU, that offense wasn't really the week to get you all settled in. You know what they do. They throw a lot at you. It can be pretty confusing and you weren't able to communicate properly all of these things come to play so I think Austin P defensively they'll be all right they throw it to the far side that's Mitchell Mitchell going for the pylon but he couldn't get there got it inside the five and gets Simmons has been going to Mitchell a lot throughout this game so far and not different that time good rocket out there and it'll be first and goal for SIU chance to Get their first score in a little bit. They had an explosive first half, and with the starters coming out in the second half and the reserves coming in to get a chance to show what they can do, it's led to the score kind of remaining similar for SIU, but another chance here to add on with under 2.15 left to go. So it's first and goal from right about the five-yard line for Simmons and company. One receiver to the left, low snap, Hand off left side, spinning and scoring is SIU and Caleb Wagner, the freshman running back from Baker, Florida, for the first time in his Saluki career. Dominic, just going down the list of these running backs, there are too many names to count that have gotten carries tonight. I mean, how about it there? Simple inside zone able to bounce off of a few defenders and find pay dirt, putting the arm up there. It's awesome stuff. This crowd is all about it. The running backs have accounted for five of the team's touchdowns here tonight in multiple different forms. Bump guard on for the extra point. That is up, and that kick is right down the middle. What a performance by this Saluki team, and Caleb Wagner, look at that. It, being embraced by all of his teammates and rightfully so. Someone getting the opportunity and credit to Nick Hill and company giving him that chance to make his first impact as a Saluki and he's able to find the pay dirt in his first game with Southern Illinois. Yeah, having fun on the sideline. All of his teammates giving him love. It's an awesome job by them, like you said, giving him the opportunity. Him finding pay dirt was a pretty good run. 
So it's a 49-16 lead. SIU on their way to a 1-0 start. We mentioned the Rocher Brailleur on the way. Northern Illinois followed by SEMO, but a momentum booster and a game to kind of set the tone here in 2023. Five and six record a year ago. The sour taste in the mouths of these players. Dante Cleveland mentioned it in an interview earlier on in the preseason. And this is a Saluki team that's also playing without the Don Dante Cleveland here tonight. One of their key defensive linemen, not suited up, but they have not needed him in this game. The defense able to get the job done, especially in that first half, despite missing one of their key players. Yeah, we haven't had a chance to give Dante Cleveland the love that he deserves. He means so much to this team. He's an older cat at around that 25 years old, so all of these players look up to him. He's been a part of life a little longer than a lot of these kids have, and I think he's taken that leadership role, and he hasn't taken it for granted, though. Nick Hill talks about him at times walking players into his office right when they need to face the consequences, and Dante knows that they're going to get away with it. Dante does not hesitate to bring that player to Coach Hill and make that player fess up to some that may seem annoying, but to coaches who care a lot about their team and growing and shaping and molding these young men, it means a lot, and I think it pays off, and I think a lot of the players are going to thank Dante for that later in his life. So we haven't been able to give Dante any love, but he's deserving of a lot of it. A six foot four senior from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Started his career all the way back in 2016 with Central Michigan, was there until 2018. Mitchell went to Central Missouri, and has been in SIU ever since 2020. And I think you're talking about his emergence as a leader on this team and someone that's fun to listen to, fun to talk to, and will be fun to watch once he's healthy to suit up again. The will still in the game, fires it right side, Trey Goodman. Stayed in bounds for a moment there before getting out of play. They tried to go to bat for Jared Castor, co-OC, and Lanier Sampson, another co-OC, for having Mike DeLillo in this game, right? You understand why you're trying to put good things on tape. You're trying to let him feel it, right? 2023 football season is here. Week one has arrived. You need to know what it feels like, even though he already does. We talked about the experience and all the games under his belt. But as far as being in the game with a minute and 39, left on the clock and you're staring 49 16 down the barrel there might not be a reason for you to be in this game having the opportunity to get injured in a ball game like this just doesn't make sense to me dom it can be hold your breath moments for austin p fans watching from back in tennessee or wherever they may be a obvious face mask call will be against siu that time around on the defensive end drain newman called for it the catch made by Kenny Odom. And Kenny Odom, the redshirt freshman from Savannah, Georgia, he's had a couple of explosive moments in this game. That time didn't get too much due to the face mask call, but he's had a couple of receptions, receptions in this fourth quarter, and he's made the most of them. And that one helps me with the chains. Yeah, he's twitchy, it's obvious. Another one of those guys that, that fits the mold for their up-tempo offense, wanting to get lined up and get the ball in his hands as quick as they can. He's one of those guys who can make defenses pay. They send Trey Goodman in motion. First down pass goes to Goodman on the right side. He cuts and had nowhere to go once he got closer to the inside. Good tackle on the out in by SIU. And it was Desmond Hearns, the safety, bringing him down. Just about a minute left to go here in the home opener. All the fans in attendance supporting SIU have a lot to be happy about what they saw here tonight as DeLillo fires it up deep. He's got his man, a beautiful throw, and he connects down the field for the touchdown. It's Kenny Odom. Right when we get done talking about him, Odom makes the big play. I talked about Twitchy. Was that enough Twitch for you, Dominic? That's awesome. So. That's right out of the gates, almost like a 100-meter dash. He knew what the goal was. Mike DeLillo and him were on the same exact page. Mike DeLello staring that safety down the middle, freezing that defense, obviously knows that he can stack that corner and he puts it in the perfect spot. That is a beautiful throw and an even better catch, an even better route on top of all of that. It's a clean play from the Governors. And again, we were just talking about it, leaving your starting quarterback in there and some other key players in there, holding your breath of possible injuries and such and meaningless moments of a game as that kick is up and it is good. But now if you 
take your starters out at the start of the fourth quarter where the offense really built up nothing throughout the game. They go into next week not having that positive film. All they have in their mouth is the sour three quarters and there was nothing positive on it. Still, those sour three quarters will be the forefront. Those are the first 45 minutes of the game. But now you have at least that. You can see what Odom can do against Division One cornerbacks. You can see what Delillo is able to do once he gets past those shaky interceptions that he had earlier on in the game. You have those positives on film now. And again, next week's not going to be easy. Tennessee's on deck for this group, but you at least have some positives in this game on, so when you go into the film room for the next opportunity you do, it won't just be the negatives for the first three quarters. You can at least show them, hey, we had this on the screen, we had this in the fourth quarter, and you know what your players are capable of. Yeah, it's as simple as that. I think that play right there represents why he's still in the ball game. The sideline needs to see it, the fans need to see it, Mike needs to feel it. Right? He understands that he has two turnovers and that the offense probably cost the governors the game, but he still needs to face the music, stand in the pocket, deliver throws for his team, because he's almost obligated to. That's an awesome throw and catch from Mike Delilio there. So 52 seconds left to go. It's a 49-23 Southern Illinois lead. The last score for SIU came from Caleb Wagner, yet another running back finding the end zone here in tonight's season opener. They go for the onside kick once again. That's easily picked up it. Oh, for a moment there, the fans wanted it, the bench wanted to see how far that could go, but instead slide down playing it safe and it'll be a first and 10 for the Saluki offense. You see the grin on Branson Combs' face. I get the sense that a coach from the sideline said, get down, get down, and Branson thought, you know what, coach, I'll listen to you. Ideally, you take that one to the house. The fans wanted it, the sideline wanted it. I think there might have been a coach on the sideline who was like, Branson, we're not doing that. Not at this moment in time, get down. But then again, that might have been his one chance to score for who knows how long, so he saw that clear path in front of him, but chose the smart route instead. So, Slugi offense back on the field, Austin P defense back on the field as Simmons lines up in the shotgun. First and 10, stands at the 40, handoff up the middle, not too much there. They'll try to run out the clock, giving us an opportunity to thank our director behind the scenes, Dennis Galloway, and also the stats crew that have helped us here tonight, from Tim McCoyne to Jordan Cruz, as well as Cooper Bentley and Alec Runyon, a great crew helping us all night long here in the season opener. Under 30 seconds left to go. First hand off, didn't get too much yardage. That stamp a little bit off. Now a right side carry and a much bigger hole on that occasion over to the right side. That was it looks to be Tony Williams Jr. Tony Williams Jr., the sophomore, five foot ten from Sparta, Illinois, getting a couple touches there. And as we approach zeros, a much different start to the 2023 season than they had a year ago. A 49 to 23 victory for the Salukis who start the year 1-0 and Stone. A lot went right for this group. Defense, offensively, all around performance for this team to improve to 1-0 through their season open. All things considered, it's mission accomplished for Southern Illinois. You dropped a 50 burger on Austin Peay in week one. We talked about them wanting to get that bad taste out of their mouth after losing by a big margin against Incarnate were the season prior. So this, check every single box, was an awesome win for the Salukis. Both teams embrace on the field. A big win for the Salukis in their home opener, 49-23. to 23. For Stone Labanowitz, I'm Dominic Hosher saying so long from Carbondale, Illinois, where the final score is SIU 49, Austin P 23. Be sure to tune into our next telecast of SIU football Saturday, September 9th, when the Salukis travel to Northern Iowa at 2.30 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other productions on our ESPN family of networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the Valley on ESPN.